We are so scared to talk about this. I just know if we get clapped back, I'm not going to see it. Sam. Don't tell, don't tell <laughs> me in hot topics. So no one tell us anything. Welcome back to Just Trish. It is Tuesdays, and on Tuesdays, we wear pink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, awkward. No. Uh, I guess it's your one day. <laughs> no, you look great. You're a straight man today. Yeah, I'm cosplaying as a hetero. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. there you go. That's that's the head throw energy. That's the oh. <laughs> I'm breaking things, punching walls. Period. Wait, what was inspired? I love it. What is inspired by the Bass Pro Shop is everything. I know. I that's see a TikTok lot of straight guys. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I see, I'm very easy to market towards because Same. if I see something repetitively, I'll buy it, and that's kind of what I what I did. Um, <laughs> and I based the outfit today on the bass pro shop hat. So okay, wait. I don't. So I don't know. Bass Pro Shop is an actual shop. It is a shop. <laughs> it's like a sports a shop. shop. <laughs> I believe they actually have giant, like, a, oh my god, this is so like not our audience. They have a giant <laughs> lake, fake lake in these shops where you can actually go in and fish. Is that the one where the guy was naked? Yes. That, okay. Yes, that's how I know that's about like it. That wasn't even <laughs> yeah. like a lake. That or, was like a whole yeah, tank. It's not wild. And where do the fish come from? They place them in there. <laughs> I don't think they like naturally migrated to the Bass Pro Shop. Oh my but god, where's Peta on them? I know. <laughs> Be like, don't put them that's in there. Actually, tea. Yeah. But I think fishing is ethical because they throw them back i think it's a mix i think a lot of people eat the fish they catch and i think some throw them back in there but Mm. i don't fish i just i'm kind of appropriating i guess appropriating the fish (laughs) culture but (laughs) (laughs) but like then the the shirt goes with it or what i don't know i kind of just i was winging it Um, is it from bass pro shop no it's zara Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then the shorts are from Gymshark. So wow! It is Shout kind out of, to all those brands. Yes, yeah, not Swan, but they not send this season to assist. Like <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we don't want that. No, you actually look good. You look like a very poster boy for it. Wow! Yeah. Thank you. I'll take it. Have I, you ever been misgendered as a straight guy? Yeah. Um, no, as no as a oh, like a pronouns. <laughs> That's just gendering. <laughs> oh, is it? That's like missexualizing. <laughs> when I was younger on the phone all the time, because I, I still have a high voice, but as a little boy, I think it was even higher. Yeah. So they would always think it's, it was my mom when I picked up the, remember the home phones? And, oh, right. Yeah. What were you on the phone with at that age? People would call and I would just pick up and then they would say like, Oh, hi, Betty. Like, they would think I was my mom. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. You answer the phone. Yeah. I would never answer the phone. After oh, scream, really? I was, like, never answering the phone. I was nosy, so I would always pick up the phone, see what's like, the who's calling, caller ID when they would, like, announce it on the home phone. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I loved being in the know. And I You're still like, do. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you are in the know. You are definitely in the know. Yeah, I um, I was misgendered the other day. And really? Yeah. Well, I guess to this person's defense... Um, and I don't want to get their pronouns wrong. To this person's defense, um, they were like, "Oh, but like I know you prefer he," and I was like, "Oh, okay." Like I guess I guess they were a fan, but they didn't say it. They didn't clarify it. I was at the mall, and they kept calling me sir. And I was oh. like, "Oh, okay," which has actually never happened. But you know what? Maybe my bio does say he, she, they. I don't know. For a minute, I liked the he, but it was just a jarring. It's never happened to me before. Wow. Um, but it was nice. And then at the end, they're like, "You prefer he," and I was like. Oh, well, yeah, like in 2021 I did. But another thing, it changes, so I don't know. But anyways, it was interesting. I never had that happen. Um, And it was weird because it was like, I'm like, oh, man. Like I could see if you were truly like one gender, like how it could be like upsetting. Because for a minute, it kind of was upsetting to me because um, I wasn't like dressed masculine or feminine or anything like that. And I was just kind of like, oh, my God. It triggered me back to school when people called me a boy with like my mustache because I didn't have my mustache waxed. And I was like, maybe they think. I don't know. But then I think it was a fan. I don't know it was very it was it was very uh, jarring so i i see it all over tiktok when people get upset with being misgendered and i was like i kind of get it because you know you don't like don't get it until you get it but then i was like fine i was like okay i think it was like a fan that was like they thought that's what i preferred yeah and they were calling me sir i kind of got a little powerful with them calling me sir i was like <laughs> <laughs> but i was like and i had baggy on i don't know it, I, it was interesting that's never happened so i was like wondering if it ever happened i guess it happened to you on the phone did you care if they called you that you were a mom um when i was young it didn't like i didn't process why they were yeah misgendering me so i like i didn't have that knowledge you know of like oh my voice is high so i sound like a woman you know oh right <laughs> you know? right right so you're just like i oh. just like oh yeah you sound like your mom i'm like no it's me like you know <laughs> <laughs> okay so it wouldn't like trigger it you or that yeah talk low yeah it never really triggered me even now like 
my voice is higher, but it's – I don't know. It just is what it is at this point, I think. You I know? Yeah. I don't know if it's, like, that high. There'd be times, like, my gaming era that lasted, like, a month in, like, 2019 where I would <laughs> film and I, I would deepen my voice a little bit to be, like, more of a oh. bro – gamer even okay. though like i had pink headphones on and a pink controller i Let's was like yeah it. what do you um, say uh poggers like we're gonna go in for the win let's uh over here let's uh shoot this uh oh. baddie over here uh, the, uh, yeah, helps. Yeah. The, uh, we're gonna uh, uh yeah this is a weird start to the hot topic sorry i, know. <laughs> I was like thinking about it because this tiktok i always see this person that's misgendered and people kind of like come for this person and i'm just like and honestly sometimes i don't know either i don't even know the, the pronouns so i just call everyone like them even yeah, today I, I was replying someone's like um oh this like agent wants to talk to you and i was like, just give them i didn't know if it was a girl i'm just give them and then they're like oh it's a girl and i was like oh maybe they, i just i didn't know i didn't know how to like respond i was like oh okay they didn't say girl i just didn't want to be wrong either way yeah they them is like a safe neutral as well yeah. i think you know even if someone especially before you actually get to know someone you know so yeah. i don't think there's any, you can't really go wrong with that I that's think. how i feel too because like the person that called me sir i don't know what their pronouns were i should have probably asked but i'm gonna just call them them and that person because i think that's easier um anyways guys to start off the show that's our intro <laughs> that's our intro we got to talk about the emmy behind oh Oscar. yeah oh moses is here too you're no longer uh so everyone noticed your voice last time like what's yeah, wrong with i was really voice? sick i was so sick yeah but you weren't well, like that, contagious yeah contagious. you were yeah. it was just my throat was so bad he was on medicine I didn't and have my voice we're also distanced we're like six feet apart for anyone who wants to know about social distancing i don't think that's a thing anymore but we are distanced <laughs> from each other if anyone cares like the shirt today Thank moses you. says i he never wears shirts. I buy him. He's like, stop buying me shirts. I never wear them. But guess who bought that shirt? <laughs> and who's wearing it for the second time? He predicted this day. <laughs> Wait, what? I predicted this day? Like in the podcast, I just go find shirts. And usually it's something you bought me. Yeah, you have a lot of shirts. I can't wait for our Valentine's one. Moses will be our guest on our Valentine's Day episode. and um, The water droplets are excited for the that The water episode. droplets come out full force. Gosh, I'm like, are there water I feel like now it's like a half trolling sometimes too. I'm like, okay. <laughs> We'll see when that episode airs. <laughs> there was a guest. I think it was Zach who was worried about his numbers. He's like, I was worried like it wasn't going to get views. I was like, I, it's so funny people think about that. Like, I never think about that when I go on other people's podcasts, mainly because I know I'll get views, but I never think about <laughs> that in general. It's funny to me people think about that because when guests come on, I never think like, oh, this will get like a lot of views. Like, you know, I don't know. Because I just, you just never know. Like, sometimes I'm always just shocked, but I, I never know. think about it either way. I feel like you kind of have to go about guest episodes just wanting to actually have a conversation and have a fun vibe. That's all it is. You know? that, to yeah. me, that's all it is. I never even think about like, oh, this will get a lot or this whatever. And it's always ones that surprise me that do get a lot. So I don't think about it at all. But <sighs> there's pressure on you, Moses. Being the guest, <laughs> I'm kidding. All. I'm kidding. <laughs> never. There's... People love it. People love it. I feel more pressure. I was telling him like the other day, I literally was thinking about it seriously. I'm like, do I make note cards? Do you want to have like a serious interview? Like, should I do research? Like, But honestly, I saw... <laughs> I saw posts of people like suggesting questions and stuff. It'd be a weird day too because it's just gonna be like you and me in here. Because usually <laughs> when a guest comes, it's a guest, me and Moses. But I'm like, are you gonna just get up? We should get one of those things where you don't have to get up each time and push the start and stop every 30 minutes. It's fine. It's gonna be exactly the same. So you're gonna get up in your interview and push <laughs> start push, and stop. Yeah. Anyway, fun. that's the cut. So. Okay, I love it. Anyways, <laughs> look forward to that in February. We have a lot of good guests coming. We have a lot of Y2K guests coming in February. A lot of drag queens and a lot of Y2K. Yeah. I'm and you are like kind of booked for like the next two months almost. Like yes. you are on it. Every time I see your stories and I see like a new <laughs> cosplay, I'm like, oh, she's got someone. So oh, yeah, yeah, that is true. People are like waiting for it. That is very true. Actually, literally, we have guests like ready to go up until like March. And so I'm just like, oh my gosh, sometimes I need to chill because I'm booking too many people at once. So we did two last week and I'm like, and like, when does this come out? I'm like, oh, I guess end of February. Like it seems so far away. So I try not to do too many. But yeah, there's a lot of guests. I'm cosplaying with our drag queens. I'm trying to get like an outfit made from each other. And the cool thing about drag queens is they tag who makes their outfits. Yeah. So I go to them. And then I have to tell the designer, like, they're cool with this because, like, I don't know if it's, like, one of a kind or whatever. But so far, all the drag queens have been cool with me recreating their looks. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Shout out to our Patreon. Sorry, guys. I'm, like, preserving my voice for some reason. I don't know why. Everyone around me has been, like, sick or they've said they've gotten over a sickness. So I'm, like, in my in my head, I keep thinking, like, is my throat is my throat scratchy? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't think it is. But I keep thinking, like, <laughs> I should preserve my voice even though we're going to be talking for six hours today. But <laughs> And we do talk for six hours. Why? Because we have a Patreon. Uh, Patreons basically sponsor our uh, our patrons sponsor our 
podcast. So you don't have to listen to any ads during the podcast. Also, we don't get any ads. So <laughs> kind of works out. It's a win-win. So if you guys want to join our Patreon, it does support the show and um, allow me to get cool costumes for our drag queens that come on. I'm very excited. So it's patreon.com slash just Trish. Um, for $5 a month, you get four extra episodes. They're almost an hour long each time. Totally worth it. Next tier up, we have eight videos a month. We're going to do a mukbang today and podcast. Then the headshot tier, this month you'll get a praying hands Trish emoji. I believe this is from our Terry Joe episode mixed with a little bit of I love you, Jesus. Um, just iconic, really. You'll get a sticker if you join the headshot tier or if you join the producer tier. You both get them. And our headshot of the month, this is our headshot of the month. It's from our gender reveal episode. I love it. It's so funny, like reflecting, like this is from the gender reveal episode this month. Um, And yeah, you'll get this in the mail if you join our producer tier. So you get the headshot, you get the sticker, you get one of these cue cards that I write on, my handwriting on those. And (laughs) (laughs) and, um, you're going to get a special Valentine card. I'm doing a Valentine shoot next week for our producer tier. And you'll get a Valentine card in the mail. That's not here yet, but I'll show you. Anyways, you have to join by February 10th to get it. We ship out February 15th, so you'll get the Valentine a little late. But um, yeah, if you want to sign up now, get all that. The producer tiers also get credits at the end of our episode. I also ask you guys for Hot Topics. We actually have a lot of producer questions this Hot Topics. Where is my thing at? We have uh, questions from Michael... London and um, Derek, Alex. Anyways, that's guys for topics. So they give us our topics. We have about Jacob Elordi. We have Gypsy Rose. We have a lot of stuff coming up. So if you want to contribute to the show, be a producer, that's our top tier. We have a lot of our headshot tier. You get stuff in the mail from me every month. Every month is a new headshot and a new something in the mail. I try to give a little extra goodie. And if you want to join the uh, lower tiers, they're cool too because you get eight videos a month and the top tiers get those too. So anyways, patreon.com slash just Trish. We love you guys over there. Truly, truly, truly. It's actually like, I don't know. Actually, it's my favorite. I don't want to say it's my favorite. This is my, this is fun. But that's really fun because we swear we get a little crazy. We let loose. We yeah, let we loose. let loose. What is that? For the Lucy the Duca song. <laughs> oh my. Are we starting with Lucy right away? Oh my gosh. Let's get into it. What else is there has to say there about been, Has there any been? Uh, no, any, no, no Lucy updates. No. no Not I was, that I know of. Oh man. I was hoping, maybe that was from Sugar and Spice. We kind of were talking nice about her. I thought she'd come back around. Lucy DeLuca, come on the podcast. <laughs> We're ready for you. There's a new queen this season that reminds me so much of Lucy. Is it a mandatory meeting? No. Oh. <laughs> Who? Or is it? No, because a mandatory meeting has the crazy makeup, right? The not. Yes. Okay, no, 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 no. It, I only think of Lucy when this queen comes out on the runway and she's always like the big smile. Oh. Who are you thinking no, of? No, but it is a mandatory meeting. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's really? the one that's reminding of. Oh, okay. So <laughs> maybe. is it? Lucy Leduca or DeLuca? Oh, the, Leduca. Le, what am I saying? I, you you kind of go back and forth. Like Lucy between, DeLuca. <laughs> you kind of mix them up a little bit. Really? Yeah. Lucy, De, Lucy LaDuca? I think it should be loosely. Loosely? And if it's loosely LaDuca, it sounds like loose poop. Like oh, a LaDuca, no. like a deuce. Why, why not? I like it. Lucy, we love you. <laughs> We've come around. Yeah, I love it. I love, I love all the queens. I do. Except a mandatory meeting. I don't know about her. Oh, I love a mandatory meeting. You love? She's silly. Yeah, there's something fun about a queen. Because now everyone is so polished when they come on a drag race. And there's something fun about a queen not fully, (laughs) you know, having the skills. But they have a big personality. And I think that's what Amanda Tori brings to the show. And I love it. Okay, I Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying there for sure. I like that too because that would totally be me. Actually, I would be (laughs) the queen that went home on Friday. Was it Hershey? Oh, yes. That's so me. Where she's like, I don't, like she had the orange heels with the green thing. And honestly, I was like, that looks fine until they're like, the shoes don't go. And I was like, oh yeah, they don't go. Or when you see them next to the other queens, you're just like, ugh. Like, you know, like, uh, was it Nymphia who did that amazing outfit? And then you have like Hershey who like sewed the pockets. Yeah. (laughs) Laughing, that's me. So I, I can appreciate that for sure. I was like, okay. So anyways, Amanda Tori's from uh, LA, right? She's yes. an LA queen. So, okay. Well, we love to see. Last episode, people were like, um, Trish is being a little punchy. I didn't think I was. Everyone thought I was a little punchy last episode. About who? Just in general. They're like, oh, oh she's a little feisty. <laughs> Oh yeah, I did was. That. Really? Yeah, some people said that. And I was like, they're like you can tell when Trisha doesn't feel her glam because that was the one where I was in the oh, gown. Yeah. They're like, she gets well, a little but, mean or something. I, I think was like, it, was I? I think it wasn't that. It was, we didn't film in the normal day. We I did. was going to say. We're filming on Saturday. And usually we don't work on the weekends. We try to keep that space. Oh, right. So that's the only thing that was different. And I feel that's what people felt. Is that A little different energy, maybe. Like I was Saturday like, morning energy. I did feel a little crazy in that look. I mean, I, I told my glam too. I was like, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't their fault, but I was like, I had like a Halloween costume. I did feel 
little crazy. So anyways, I was trying to... But I mean, what do people expect if somebody changes looks and cosplays? Yeah. The Something comes changes. with that. Like, otherwise, right. what's the point? You were exactly. channeling Gypsy Rose. <laughs> I was channeling Gypsy Rose. Well. Feisty, right? <laughs> Everyone turned on her and now that's happening again. Uh, so I don't know. Now I'm like making a conscious effort to be like, you know what? You're right. I love him. Like, I'm trying not to be mean to anyone. But the drag queens, yeah. I love the comment room made to her. Where he's like, wow, you look prettier out without your makeup. I know. <laughs> Poor Amanda can't escape but the it's drags, kind of, but it's fun. Right. It's kind of a compliment. Yeah. Because she does look good out of drag, too. Some, sometimes you see the guys and you're just like, not that they don't look good, but they're a little jarring. You're like, whoa, that's like a... <laughs> Moses literally said yesterday, he's like, it should be called the ultimate catfish. I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Because well, this is like musters at work, you know? Because like, when you see the person without the makeup, you're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's the same. So that's why I just thought, like, okay. it's a compliment. Like, it's amazing. It's a compliment. <laughs> Moses is shady ultimate. boots. Shady like, boots. He literally said challenge. that one He's like, this should be called Ultimate Cabbage. So I was like, okay, calm down. I'm like, it's drag. <laughs> They're going to have Moses on as a guest judge. Um, could you imagine? They probably would before me. I just thought after the last episode where we talked about myself, Fashage being, like, not great, I was like, they'll never invite me. I don't know. I think, like, I, I guess because when she, I was a little partial, because, like, when Spice was on and saying that, you know, Michelle judging the trial, like, don't do that, it's like, it's kind of taking away a little bit of, like, who they are you yeah. know what i mean i don't know i had a little different perspective i guess after that and i was just like yeah i don't know i don't mm. oh who is do you think oh my god euphoria isn't her name rue yeah do you think it's named after rupaul <laughs> i just thought of that when you said rue because it's similar <laughs> it is right similar, the same timelines yeah. and stuff like that oh interesting because when you were saying rue i was like from from i don't even watch euphoria i just know the name because i hear it in tiktok that's interesting i wonder if they did <laughs> I always think about that. Like, RuPaul's so powerful. Like, I feel like he's everywhere. I know. Ru mm. at the Emmys. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, Emmy. Emmy. I forgot about that. I, by the way, amazing. We were talking so much about this, but let's hear about this Emmy. And then we'll talk about Ru at the Emmys. Oh, I mean, I don't know if there's that much to say. I kind of wanted to bring it A, because the Emmys were last week, but B, because I feel like no one believes me. So I'm what? like, this is, it has my name. <gasps> oh um, my God. So it is real. It is mine. I didn't steal it. That's so cool. It's heavy. I could kill someone with it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That is true. Someone breaks in and watch you. This is my weapon. Is it gold? Yeah. Is it like fully gold? I think so. I mean, it feels kind of because you have to maybe, pay. For, you have to like you win, obviously, but you have to pay you have for the actual for the, statue. Yeah, and it's kind of expensive, like a right? couple thousand. No, I think it was like six hundred dollars or something. Okay, for gold. I mean, maybe it's gold dipped it pl or plated or something. Okay. I don't know. I thought it was like specify, solid gold. I was like, wow, that must be. Expensive. It is pretty heavy. So anyone at the Emmys that are carrying these around all day, you got a producer credit. Is that what it is? Yes, this was from the daytime. Emmys. Ah, uh, we gotta yeah. win a daytime Emmy. We gotta get a TV show so we can win a daytime Emmy. I believe it. They do have like a digital category, but I think we gotta go straight to straight to the um, broadcast awards. Yeah, so we need to figure that out. This is amazing. So, what year did you win this? That was from 2022. Did you go to the ceremony? No, I didn't. No? <laughs> no. Oh, I felt like it. you could have gone, right? You just didn't want to? I think there was only five people that could have gone, and you got to, like, win a raffle to go. I didn't even enter the raffle. It's too much. Why? Too much, too much. It's really? long. Yeah. You wouldn't want to go on stage? No. I love that. Even just to be a support in the back. You know when, like, 30 people go up? I love it. I would go up there, too. Like, when Drag Race won last week, every, every single queens, person except went. Except for Sugar yeah. and Spice. Oh, they didn't go up? Oh, they went to, like, In-N-Out or something. Yeah. Didn't they? I wouldn't yeah. know the tea on that. They came on before the Emmys. I didn't even know they were going to the Emmys. Um, but I saw something afterwards that they were like, they got it. They're like, we left because it was boring. I was like, it wait, is what happened? It is boring and long. You I don't blame that's them. that's why they left? No. There's no way. Or maybe they just weren't vibing with all the girls. I don't know. You can kind of tell who didn't really like each other mm, because, nice. yeah. <laughs> It's like, what are you doing next to me? But it all looked great. Lucy DeLuca was also not there. She was absent. Oh, why? That's I don't know. Tea. That is tea. Oh, my gosh. But Princess Poppy was the one that you thought was Lucy in the green I goblin. The troll. Yes. I don't like it. Did really? you like it? Everyone I loved it. it. I don't like it. I thought it was fun. Camp, but for Met Gala, not for the Emmys. <laughs> I was like, because you know you're just trying to get the attention. Again, okay, whatever, in my opinion. But it's like, I just feel like it's the Emmys. Everyone was beautiful. Everyone looked beautiful. Selena's titties. You know, everyone is beautiful. They're not, because Selena's titties can't, but she was pretty, you know? It's like, I feel like you're just trying to stand out and be obnoxious. You know what I mean? I, the Emmys were so boring that, can I say that? I think I can. The Emmys were so boring <laughs> that I'm glad someone shook the table, Had I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I guess if it was just me and my show, I'd be like, like if you showed up, we're nominated for an Emmy, and then you're like, I'm going to come as a troll. And I'd be like, <laughs> you're taking it away. You know what I mean? Like, this is a big moment. I don't know. I just, I, I didn't like it. And this is me being nice to you. I feel good. I like my glam. Just so everyone doesn't think I'm a hater. But I just, you know, I feel like I can offer some crit criticism. And I just feel like with that, I'm just like, I don't know. You're just trying. It's just trying really hard to I be standing it. out. Yeah, I get you know? it. Especially with 
you you have that like traditional like award shows are a big deal yeah. to you you know because you grow up with them so you look at them differently so yeah. that point point of view makes sense I think and okay. is valid so <laughs> thanks so go ahead, the like. that- <laughs> no I'm constantly uh yeah the Emmys were just you know yeah they kind of were whatever I loved uh Jennifer Coolidge winning from t- five years I ago I know <laughs> The bear winning everything. <laughs> yeah, always. Me and Jeremy Allen White have a lot in common, I guess. You guys have both have a, who else? Both have an Emmy and are you wearing We're straight. <laughs> We're straight coded. <laughs> I didn't know he was like married for a while and had a baby and just yeah. recently all that. And he had like substance I think I think I think alcoholism. Alcohol. Yeah. Because he has to he said he has to blow every time he yeah. sees his kids. He's gone through a lot and I like that yeah. he's kind of open about it and w- about his like recovery journey and that now he's like in such a good place where he can win awards. He's like the new it guy. He's he winning is the everything. It guy, yeah. But you know, just like every it guy, it girl, like people like start to turn, you know what I mean? Yes. And I feel like it'll people will people already have been kind of like i just don't get it like he's just not that hot and you know people yeah. start to turn already yeah that's very renee rap coded i feel like that started happening with you her you predicted that a couple recently. weeks ago yeah i mean it was pretty obvious it's literally anytime someone becomes super hyped on social media there's going to be like that counterculture of like actually she's not you know yeah what do you think about that the renee rap turn um i think the big thing that caused it was when she was like on watch what happens live and she said that she was ageist yeah i think that's kind of what like wow i wonder what you thought up. about that because i'm like you go so hard for her just like you do with Rachel Zegler and I do love Renee Rapp too who doesn't love her but I was like and I maybe that's her sense of humor but I'm also like that I don't know it's like joking about being racist or something like that you know what I I mean I think it's definitely different this is why I stand with Renee Rapp she (laughs) suffers from chronic unseriousness and I also suffer from that same illness if you take something that she says super serious when she's like clearly like being hyperbolic and jokey i feel like that's on you you know i think she was having fun and being silly and we should normalize being silly that is my like political stance i think yeah i think so unless it's like inciting like hate because people who don't know that is kind of like i don't know they think it's funny or cool like all these young girls who love renee rap is like yeah old people shouldn't drive they're worthless like you know what i mean like i just think there's certain things you shouldn't joke about i think being ageist because like age people do get mistreated so poorly like really old people and i'm just like i don't know to me it's like one of those things you don't joke about I don't know. You know, I'm more pro Rachel Zegler, and I'm kind of now going like, yeah, actually, Rachel Zegler got so much hate for saying the same stuff Renee Rapp does, but Renee Rapp gets praised. And I was like, they both said both of their movies were outdated and needed an update. Rachel Zegler got so much hate, and Renee Rapp was like praised, like, yeah, queen, yes, queen. It's just like, I don't know. I do feel a little bit, and also like the stuff Rachel Zegler wasn't even half as bad. And I know you said I don't think it's bad as like what Renee said. Again, I like Renee. I think the ages thing like bothered me, but it's not like. Rachel Zegler ever like came for like a group of people or something. I don't know. I, I guess I'm maybe on that train too. You can count me as a millennial woman. That's kind of like eh, I, I don't knew know. that was gonna be what got. I knew driving here and I was thinking about <laughs> what Trisha's take on Renee Rapp is gonna be. And I knew a she probably didn't like Mean Girls and b being a millennial woman. Renee Rapp saying that she doesn't get along with millennials. <laughs> both of those things combined is not gonna be. It good. does kind of bother me. Even Tina Fey said something about millennials. Like millennials think they own this movie. She like said that. She goes, but it's my movie. I wrote it. I was like, yeah, but the fans made it. Like that's. It does bother me. I'm like, I feel like I'm being feisty. I'm really not trying to be. I promise. And to, to be fair, I loved Mean Girls. Oh my god, loved oh really? It. I'm loved so it. surprised. Oh my god, I loved everything about it. Like, I feel like the people that are like don't like it or whatever, they just don't get it. I thought them. I also thought the musical was really good. Like the musical fans out there that like hated it. It was like it is what it was for movie version, and also like it was made originally for TV, like Paramount Plus. So it's obviously wasn't big budget, but I didn't like mind that. I don't know. So I love, love, loved it. Loved literally every single person in it, except for Aaron Samuels, but I think he just didn't add much to <laughs> yeah. it. You know, I was like, they cut all his songs. <laughs> like, even in this, till someone gets hurt, like at the end, him and Regina have this cool, like, little duet. I'm like, God, they didn't put anything. Like, they could have, like, auto tuned his voice or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was wild that they didn't. Um, but other than that, I, I like loved the movie. I loved it so much. I was like so excited. Yeah, but I guess it's not even like because then I saw Renee rap on um, SNL and be like the media training joke. It's not even like she's not media trained. Like I get her shtick. I get her thing. Um, and maybe I'm just old, but I'm just like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. And I think because so many girl, young girls will come from me and be like, she's old. What is she like 40? And it's like. I get it. You're trying to be cute and funny, but it's also just like gross because like so many people don't get to age. They don't get that blessing. They don't get to be 40. And I just, I don't know. It it, it really rubbed me the wrong way because I am such a Renee Rap fan. I do love her. Um, but it rubbed me the wrong way. And now I'm on the Rachel Zegler twin because I was like, yeah, you know what? Honestly, the stuff she said is not even half as bad. She just said it needed an update and she's probably right. And, and Mean Girls needed an update. And But you know what? Mean Girls did have updates, but... <laughs> 
They updated everything but the fat phobia. And I was like, why do they keep that in, especially with Renee not being skinny? I mean, it's not a dig at her, but she's not Regina George size zero like it was in the movie. It's like, why do they keep the fat phobic comments in? Like a lot of it, too. So I was like, they updated everything else but that. I guess so. Yeah, it could have been maybe like something maybe instead of like gaining weight, like it makes her hair fall out or something, I guess. Like it could affect her like another way. That's it. Like, but it's also like then you affect the people who suffer from like lupus or something where your hair falls out. So yeah. there kind of is like no win, I guess. No, but if you but, have acne, no one's going to get offended about that. Oh, true. Like, you, I have a ton of acne. I had cystic acne. No one's going to be like, oh my God, the acne community. It's like it's something <laughs> people get. It's not like a big thing. I guess so. Yeah. I feel like if they're going to go woke, which they kind of did and great, it's like, you know, go full woke. And I don't know. It was it was weird just because, again, she, you know, she's very just like an average girl it's like to not i don't know to be like you have to be skinny and you have to lose weight i was like i don't know (laughs) like that's my only critique otherwise i like completely loved it um yeah i don't know people were so i loved um karen i loved her oh yeah she looked so good and then it also made me think too because i was like wow she looks so good and like obviously my favorite part about her was her chest but then i was like is that like like not my favorite part about her but like the thing i loved and i was just like is that wrong to like you know what i mean like how we can't google women right you're not supposed to like lust after you know like who made the boob joke joy cole made the boob joke about barbie and it, i was like ew that's so gross like the women are more than their boobs but then if you see a woman with like her boobs out and they're nice boobs can you like appreciate them i think so i don't know because i was like oh i love her boobs i kept saying that to my sister i was like oh my god in the in the halloween one I was like god her boobs are amazing but i was like i don't know if you're like allowed to say that anymore i think you're allowed to say that but you can't like surmise everything about someone or a project especially and be like big boobs you know that's what i was thinking the whole time i was like boobs. <laughs> and i know we can do it about guys like zach efron everyone's like oh my god look at him in his underwear wrestling you know and i it's like and then i was just thinking like because my biggest thing i was like wow her boobs look so good and i was like i don't even know if that's like a, something you can give as a compliment it's like telling someone they're skinny like you can't really say that i, I think time place context all matters to you like if it's a if you're we're bar bar stool or something where like she had Great knockers. Like, that would be very different. <laughs> That's what it makes me feel like. I feel like I'm one of those people now. Because she's means- also young, like, in her early 20s. I'm yeah. Like, uh. like, a girl the girl thing, too. I feel like that's, like, a different appreciation of, like, the body, you know? And you've always thought of, like, especially, like, women's bodies differently. Like, you, yeah. the way that you view them is different. It's not, like, a very, like, sexualized, predatory perspective. Definitely not. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think <laughs> no, that makes it very but different. I'm like, does that affect that person if I say that? It's so weird. It's, like, such a weird thing. I do love big boobs. I just feel like big boobs. And, like, look, here's the like, I like little boobs too. You guys know I glorify skinny. I love skinny. I love little boobs, like Lily Rose Depp. I love all of it. But I miss, like, big boobs. I don't know, like the Y2K era. I go back and forth because I want my implants out. But then I see her boobs and I'm like, oh, they look so good. I go back and forth. I don't know. And by the way, I thought they all had really beautiful, like, great bodies. I thought Gretchen was – like, I did love that it wasn't, like, stick skinny, like the yeah. first movie. Because, like, Gretchen, again, none of these people are big. Like, I, when I'm saying this, it's like that they weren't, like – you know, they just had, like, The early legs. 2000s were a crazy time because mm-hmm. Lindsay Lohan, I think – in Mean Girls was considered like maybe like the thicker yeah. like plus size, which is crazy. No, I know. So the fact that it wasn't like early two thousands diet culture, like stick thin, scary thin, I think is a good I sign of the it. times. Yeah. And I thought Renee, I have pink cargo pants because I saw she oh. wore pink cargo oh, pants. I love that. I loved, I loved her outfits. I actually loved her. I thought she looked good. I know like the styling was critiqued by a lot of people. I actually thought she looked so good. I loved her acting. Like I really did love everything. I loved the songs they picked for her that they chose because they did cut a lot out. I love Janice. I loved, da- I loved Damien. He was so good. So yeah. good. Oh my God. I was like, he's actually so amazing. Um, I just really loved it. Loved Katie too. Loved everybody. It was really good. And that was my only critiques of it. But um, yeah, Aaron Samuel literally could have been. Uh, Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. I wonder why they went with him. And no, like good for him. But I was like, that's so random. Yeah. They should have yeah. gone Jonathan Bennett from the original. Then time. that would be creepy. <laughs> like this 40 year old man in high school. He looks good though. He, he looks does, 20. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just was shocked he didn't sing at all. I was like, how do you not have. A, I know. Like you could literally do anything to get him to like have a good voice. Like it doesn't matter. Could have had a different singer. Drew Seeley, I'm sure was yeah. available. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Zach Efron High School Musical 1. Yeah. yeah. Yes, very much. Yeah, I thought that would have been good. I loved it. I was so excited to talk about it. I saw it like right after we filmed the last one. And it was really, really good. And I hope there's more musicals. It did do well. I think I asked this before. It yeah, did well. I think yeah. it was number one for the first week it came out. It's number one again this past weekend. I think it made like 11 million. Um, so already for like a made for TV budget, you know, like a Paramount Plus budget, it's done really well. Like it's definitely made money, you know. Oh, because I was going to say 11 million doesn't seem like a lot. But you're right. I guess if it's and made- it's. It's still number one. So, I mean, it had a big drop. I think the it opened at like, 
I forget. I think maybe it opened like around 30, 30 to 40, and then it dropped to 11, mm. but still held on to number one. So that's good. And the budget was small. So. It was. I know. My sister's like, this looks like one of your music videos. <laughs> I was like, actually, my music video is fine. Again, I, I don't mind it. Like, it just kind of made sense. I don't know if it was bigger budget. It'd be kind of weird. Yeah, I think it made sense for like the world that they that they built. Yeah, and it was good, all things considered. So I loved it. I know when I see the movies, like I mean, I'm like, oh god, like I do think Renee Rapp was obviously the breakout of it. I thought, oh my god, she's so good. Um, and same thing with Hunger Games. When I saw Hunger Games, I was like, oh, it's like, no, not Hunger Games. I liked Hunger Games. Okay, scratch that. <laughs> I liked it. I didn't think she was the breakout, but she was good. You know what I mean? But I yeah. have more appreciation now for Rachel Zegler. Love that. That's you know a journey. I mean? yeah. yeah. It's a journey. It's like you see someone else be a little too extreme and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I saw someone point that out that they're like, how come we're like not giving Renee Rapp that the same part crap? is, but also like I'm glad I'll take it. Maybe people have learned from the Rachel Zegler train to not just apply that to everyone that comes up. <laughs> um, but I, I stand with Renee, Renee Rapp. I think she's fun. I think she's funny. I think she's unserious. I think she's so talented. I love when she's just like candid and off the cuff. Yeah. And out of pocket in interviews. I think it's fun. Okay. And in an age where everyone is so boring with interviews and so safe, I'm glad that Renee Rapp is having a little fun. Okay. And <laughs> I don't think you should take it serious. And I, cause I also remember like growing up in entertainment, like I was like the youngest one that worked at like the first show I worked at and no one would take me serious. Like I would come in with ideas and everyone would be like, oh, here's the millennial back when millennials were like the young ones. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> Like, oh, you're just a millennial. Like, you don't get it or whatever. You don't get how all this works. Everyone was so much older. Yeah. And I think Renee has probably gone through a lot of that, too. So I think yeah. when she's saying this stuff, like, she's being jokey and just, like, having – but she has had, like, those experiences. But, yeah, if you're younger, don't take her serious. I don't think it's that serious. Be nice to people who are older Be, unless they suck. That's a big one. Please respect <laughs> elders. Even if they do, just know that they're old and they come from a different generation. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's fine, educate everybody. Educate them. Yeah, edu maybe educate them. Get them up to date. And you're lucky if you make it to 40. Everybody. But, um, yeah. I get it. Did you see her on uh, S – oh, who asked that? One of our producers asked about – Derek asks about SNL. He wanted to know about Jacob Elordi, but obviously Renee Rapp was on there, and E.T. was on there. I was gagged was at that. Was that product placement? No, everyone was pretty shocked by that. It was pretty funny because really? they – Moses yeah. is convinced they paid for a spot no, on there. <laughs> we had no idea. Everyone was really gagged because they also had the, all the graphics and everything. I don't know how they rebuilt it all. But we wouldn't pay for it because they were making fun of E.T. So, <laughs> But yeah, even so, it's publicity. <laughs> it like is. Everyone... That's why we were excited. We're like – to be a part of SNL is like – pretty historic this is the first one i actually went and i watched every single sketch that was on the youtube channel but i think that was everything yeah that's how um, i watch it too god damn that jacob alordi oh wait do we love we have a jacob alordi candle i should have brought it oh well, the bath water yeah, one but it oh, smells you... like cotton like oh. you said it's like not it doesn't smell like bath water yeah i want it to smell like but you love you love i thought you weren't like uh, on it i wasn't but, but now you that... are was it SNL Damn, that did it for Jacob you? Lordy. I it's been a lot of things. Like picture, I've had like my castle walls, they're built so strong, like a strong foundation, strong cement, and Jacob Lordy being so charming is like slamming down the walls with like a battering ram, like breaking them down, saying like love me, love me, love me. Wait, is this a fantasy? I missed the first two this seconds is of an this. An analogy. <laughs> it's like a okay. metaphor. I thought this was like a dream you were having. I was no. like, okay, okay, got it, got it. It's got a it. metaphor okay. for how I felt about him. Like okay. I've I've held strong i was like eh, he can't really win me over i'm kind of i'm jacob lordy neutral but he is so freaking charming that it's so hard to not get on board and get with all the girls and the gays and love him it is so hard he's so uh, I'm sweet on board, but what part of him is charming because his monologue was like none of his personality i, know. I think it's just seeing everyone in the audience like obviously there's actors during his monologue but then the girls in around are all like so like <laughs> giggling so good. they're kicking their feet they're yeah. blushing they're like oh my god jacob lordy the promo too where he's like am i baby girl coded yes. i was like oh, oh my god oh my yeah. god he why very, are you so yeah. sweet yeah and also with a, he's a he's like a person queen like he loves yes, he has he but tega everywhere louis vuitton i was like oh my god i kind of love this he carries around little books in his back pocket and I reads at the gas station wait is that real yeah he was I like he stages that i kind of thought that was fake too but yeah. now but after i said now i'm like i guess it's real maybe he loves to read no like, i don't think i don't think anyone just is like at the gas station reading like you want to pumping keep gas and like reading a book yeah, i'm like yeah. oh my god but maybe like half the sketches that he was in are all were just about him being hot, like being too oh, hot, yeah. being too tall. The Bachelor one was yes. really funny. Um, to be able to flex like that, like even to be, joke at yourself, like just being too hot is so powerful, and I can't imagine what that's like. <laughs> we applaud him for being hot. Good job, good job, you're hot. Jacob. You're so strong. <laughs> guys really do have it easier than girls. Like we get so hard on girls, but it's like guys. I like, know. Good job. <laughs> they just have to like show up and be like not an asshole, and that's all yeah. it takes to like love them. But I guess. Totally, he could totally be an asshole. We have no idea. That's and we're true. Just, like, 
we love you. <laughs> it's so hard. I want to not like him so bad, but yeah. it's like, I don't know if I can hold strong anymore. I think I think I might be on the Jacob Lordy train now. I, I was on the Jacob Lordy train after Priscilla. Did you ever watch Priscilla? No. Never saw Saltburn. Never saw Priscilla. Oh. Hardly saw Euphoria. Oh, that's right. You but... didn't watch Saltburn. Saltburn is actually good Like if you focus on it. You're just not into the serious. Um, There's hot guys in it. Both of them I, are hot. I know. I just I'm like intrigued by it, but now I just know too much about it that like yeah. it feels pointless to watch it. I thought he was really um, good in those. I thought he was good in both of them. I know someone I saw on the street. They're like she's naming her baby Elvis, and they're like after like Jacob Elordi. <laughs> And I told him, I'm like, yep, that's the only Elvis I care about. <laughs> Maybe that's how we'll get Jacob Lloyd on, we say. Or Austin yeah. Butler, whoever comes first, I guess. Oof, that's a tough one <laughs> who I'd rather accepts. have on. Jacob Lloyd would probably be more fun. I think so, too, because he's just baby girl. But Austin you know? Butler, I would love him to come on as Elvis. That'd be yeah. fun, too. Um, baby girl. <laughs> he is baby girl coded. He is. Uh, and yeah, their, I like him, their relationships being like kind of intertwined. Because I think Jacob Lloyd dated Kaya Gerber, and then Kaya oh. Gerber went with Austin Butler. Oh. Yeah. I, wow, that is crazy. God, these girls. I had, I've had pretty girls on like last week ordered two pretty girls in a row and um, they're all beautiful but the, these are like obviously like these stunning models that like literally one of them was like oh yeah like I have the weekend's phone number and I was like Ooh. what the <laughs> yeah that was the tea I was like oh my god okay um, but I'm I'm always just enamored by pretty girls who just date all these hot successful guys I'm like what is their life like I just dated so many literal like losers that like don't like have jobs or anything and I'm just like how do you just get successful guy after successful guy like yes you're hot but like there has to be something else like right there's so many hot girls in the world like I know that's why I caught myself with Olivia Jade because again I got in the Jacob Lordy bandwagon and then <laughs> there was rumors us weekly reported that Olivia Jade and Jacob Lordy broke up and then turns out not that true. was not the truth no but it was so sad because I caught myself I was like, yeah how could Olivia J get Jake Blordy anyway I caught myself being like such a little misogynist bitch even like, in your private life yes I was like and then I was like girl pull yourself out of it you don't I have know. a shot with Jacob Lordy you know but Imagine being her because all the comments are like, yes, Jacob, we, he's free. Like, <laughs> Jacob, if if you want, like, I'm available. Open heart, open mouth. Like, other girls are, like, yeah. ready for him. I would not be alive if I was Olivia Jade. That would be so hard. Yeah. So now I feel for her. And I now I stand with Olivia Jade, I guess. I, yeah, because the hot girls have problems. Like, the hot girls I interviewed hot last girls, week. We have problems, they too. too. <laughs> we're just like you, except we're hot. And I was like, but then I kind of felt for them. I was like, oh, I kind of feel because like a lot of them are like insecure and so they do have like insecurities and like, yeah, you do kind of feel for them, especially when the world is rooting against you in yeah. your relationship. Who was else was like that? It was, were you chiming in? You love Jacob family. Lord. What? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> they nice. just broke up and everyone were like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That everyone was like, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> <but."> <laughs> <laughs> You're a Jacob Elordi stand though. You said you like Jacob Elordi and all the movies we watched. Yeah, I just think sometimes the casting was not the right one, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. You thought Timothy Chalamet should have played a Jacob Elordi part. I was like, mm. it, it just didn't look European in that Wait. movie. But oh, in Saltburn, he was not. That was not the right oh cast for him. God. He looked like an American frat boy. Moses is in, canceled. In, no, first of all, American. He was a British frat boy. <laughs> He didn't come off as much. What? <laughs> you are on something because he was so good in Saltbird. <laughs> and I'm not even, you know me, I'm not into like young guys where I'm just like, they're so hot. Like, that's just like, no, he was thing. good. He was, his character was like lovable. You know, he had a good character. Yeah. Like, you liked him. He was a nice person. He was not. <laughs> That's why I loved about it so much is like I don't really get into people like characters or I do get into characters from time I get obsessed with them and I just thought he was so he was so nice he helped out this like kid and then the weirdo was weird but whatever but uh, I was just like yeah he was so sweet but it is it is kind of a cinematic masterpiece more than the story like yeah, the story for me was simple it wasn't that exciting but it is beautiful movie to watch so mm -hmm. you might enjoy watching it. Story was good i like the story i love barry keoghan i really do love we said i know his name now it's keoghan uh, period that's okay, how you say it. yeah i love him i really do like i honestly think he's just as hot as jacob like i'm like is he supposed to be ugly in this movie like i because he was like a freak everyone's like oh why are you hang out with this kid and i was like he's he's good looking like i don't understand you don't like him Most no I, I think he was he was a good actor he was he was casted perfectly he was a good actor he was, <laughs> he was casted perfect he's, to play the freak <laughs> yeah exactly like i didn't I think, I think but your taste in men is i think he's good looking comment if you think you like is most good looking. people like you think most people are good looking but that's not true i think i don't think most people are good looking i feel i feel like you thinking ethan slater is good looking is what like <laughs> a lot of people make <laughs> look at you yes. sideways, sideways for so i, I think like, i think the characters are good looking like who pl like right the, like, the characters they play are good looking your reason to think somebody is good looking is not based on their looks that's true 
Yeah. Mm. Period. Mm. <laughs> like, the weekend, like I really do love his character, and the, I, I should probably stop saying I like the idol. Like literally, everyone's like, "Ew, why that movie? That show's so disgusting." I was like, "Oh my gosh, okay." But um, I like him. I like maybe we could Barry Keoghan is dating Sabrina Carpenter. They were spotted together. Yes. So yeah. I like. I kind of like that couple. I think. I like it. They look like each other though. They look too close. Sometimes when couples look too much like each other. I'm like, that's mm, too close. I don't know who else like I could picture her with. So I think this Barry thing makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think I like it. I think he's a little too, like, but he has, like, a kid and stuff. Sometimes I, not that oh, it's, like, a, true. I don't know. Is she young? young? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think she's early 20s, I believe. See, that's what I'm saying. I know her, like, Disney Channel, like, Boy Meets Girl Meets World or something like that. Like, that's how, so I just think, is she too young? But maybe she's not. Like, someone told me Kian's girl is, like, 32, and I was like, oh, I thought she was, like, 20, Same. so. yeah. I don't know. Anyways, they are cute. Uh... I definitely know Sabrina Carpenter hate here. There's no... I love Sabrina. I love her too. And I feel like her not doing press is good because sometimes it's just like not knowing what they think is better, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I know people need to do it, whatever, but it's like sometimes when people are a little more elusive. But Jacob Lordy is very good at press. Like when he does little press, he's like cute. When he talked about like Lilo and Stitched and the Elvis and I was like, first of all, it annoyed me. I was just like, oh, okay. But then I was just like, okay, that's kind of cute. See? Yeah. I knew it. But it's again, it's me being like, guys are cute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, You're if Renee Rapp said that, I don't know. <laughs> I, but the thing is I love her name I don't know it, it is weird I don't know it is weird how it turns but maybe I'm a little judgy I don't know I think it's also when something like hits close to home yeah, I it's always it. like Ugh, but I don't know um, Jacob Lordy would love he was good on SNL he was great I like his he changes accents so well I just think he's so talented yeah he's um, definitely he's definitely it boy now and it's hard to resist it's I think they talked about like Euphoria season 3 is like finally getting written right now and I don't think he's gonna come back I find it hard no. to believe that any of them are gonna come back for Euphoria. They have to be like out of college at this point. I know. Rue would probably be dead, I'm assuming, right? Because she does drugs. So I'm sure she's not going to even survive past high school. But Zendaya, I think, is a producer on the show, I think. So she'll get the coin no matter what, if she's on it or not. Yeah. I don't know. I just can't imagine any of them returning. Like, I, Jacob, I think, has gone past it. Yeah. Sydney Sweeney, I think, has probably gone past mm -hmm. it, too. I don't know. I don't know. Did you see that rom-com? I did see it, actually. Was it good? I haven't oh. seen it. I was like, oh, it's not good. <laughs> Where is it? I don't even know if it's out. Anyone but yes, it actually did really, really well. What? I thought yeah. everyone was like, this is awful. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I was kind of neutral on it, but it passed like a hundred million at the box office this past weekend. And it is only it theaters? Yeah, it's been oh, in theaters. I thought it was and it's, streaming. It hasn't been like number one, but it's been like number three, like around the number three spot, but it's never like had a drop. I think it cost like twenty something million to make and it oh, made a hundred million great. at the box office. So I love a rom com, but the new rom coms kind of like just don't hit. Like, I saw one with J-Lo and Josh Jumel. It was, like, streaming. Oh, oh Len that was in it. He was so good. Yeah. But um, it was, like, not good. And J-Lo is, like, amazing. Like, all her rom-coms are great. But, like, the Marry Me one was horrible. The one that that one I was just talking about, Jennifer Coolidge was in it, too, was horrible. And I was just like, how? I think it's the writers that just don't know how to make rom-coms anymore. Yeah. Did you see the new Jennifer Lopez trailer, though? For what? <laughs> <laughs> For her album. No. Ooh, Wait, what? It's so crazy. I actually okay. need you to see it because okay. it's it's that okay. crazy. It's it's very Trish coded. I was gonna be a hater, but it's so Trish coded that I don't know if I can hate on it. Sometimes I'm a little bit of a J Lo hater, a little bit. I'm a J Lo hater. We'll get into it. There's a lot of J Lo haters out there. Thank you. What do I look up? Is it on her Instagram? It, Thank if you, you YouTube it. J Lo, this is me now trailer. It's an album, but she's releasing it as if it's a visual album, so it's kind of a movie. Already, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds so pretentious. Like, it's okay. wild. Wow. Okay. It is the craziest okay, thing crime. I've ever seen in my life. The it <laughs> looks like an Avengers movie. It looks like yeah. It, it looks like Avengers, <laughs> Hunger Games. Uh, I don't know what is going on. Is who, it a what's the budget? Who ten billion dollars was the budget? Like, from, like I'm who's giving this so money confused. to her? I have wow. no idea what's going on. Is it a romantic comedy? Is it like a sci-fi thriller? It. Is it like post-apocalyptic? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> She's, she's at like her singing in the rain. Yes. She's at a wedding. She's at a therapist's office. She's in a, a sweatshop factory. Like, yeah. what is going on in this? It is the wildest thing I've yeah. ever seen. And I, I hated it. You hated it. I don't I don't hate it because I would do it. I would totally That's do what, that. Okay. That, that exactly oh, was my journey. Okay. Yes. Like, I, if someone gave me $10 million, that's exactly <laughs> what I would do with it. There's not even a question. Forget the house with the slides I want. I'm like, I'm putting it on this video. I love it. But she, to me, I don't know. There is... <sighs> Can I talk about women I like? Because there are so many women I genuinely love and like and root behind. 
J Lo is I just it's never hit for me. Like J Lo's never hit. Even yeah. I literally this morning we were talking about it in Glam. We were talking about like um oh because we were talking about the Super Bowl coming up and I was like oh like do you think Usher will bring out anyone? I'm like no one like Rihanna didn't bring out anyone. The Weekend didn't bring it. But they're like oh um like Shakira brought out like you know Bad Bunny or something like that. And so and then I saw J Lo and they're like did you ever see the J Lo documentary? So we watched this like clip of her being like oh like she was like annoyed that she wasn't yeah. the headliner. And I was like I get it. But I was like why do you say that? Like why like, talk about no media training? I was just like why would you say that? Like that's so weird. And I don't know, it was weird. So, anyways, I'll, everything I see her kind of just rubs me long. I used to love her though in like romantic comedies, yeah. like Made in Manhattan and stuff. But that one is crazy. So it's just an album. It, yeah, she's releasing an album. This is me. Dot dot dot. Now, and she's releasing <laughs> a film to go with the album. I guess it is absolutely bonkers on amazon prime so do you think it's a full film like a i good question i kind of think so i kind of think so at least like, like 45 minutes but do you think get. there's like acting in between i from the trailer it looks like <laughs> i like it I like she's it giving also. lines so yeah it's very like michael jackson when he used to make like those 10 minute 15 minute videos like you rock my world and stuff like that like they were always he had like chris tucker in it and marlon brando and like michael madsen and it was like this like cinematic thing like not to say she's michael jackson but it was like i kind of live for it it's kind of r kelly r kelly like not the problematic person. <laughs> like the in the clo- like trapped in the closet, you know, where that I was guess. like the saga. Yeah. And uh, obviously it's on Prime. They probably can't how much I just want to know how much money they gave her. I know, because it looks like the special effects, the CGI, the everything is just crazy. It is like Avengers Endgame, like fifty million dollar. Like crazy. it's crazy. She has some hardcore stands though. Like people who like love J Lo, like love J Lo. Oh, I think. Because I, I mean I met some like I had a hairdresser years ago that was like obsessed with J Lo. Like nothing she did was wrong. I get I don't know if I get it now. I also have a J Lo story when I I, I I have a J Lo story too. Really? Okay, yeah, okay, let's, let's hear yours. Let's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for Ryan Seacrest for like three months. It was not oh my fun. God, T. Wait, like personally, you like I did his with social him? media. Yeah, I was like a social media person. Did you for, talk like, to him? Three months. Yeah. In person? Yeah. Were you like um, this? I come to his house and you're like tweeting for him. Not or something? His, like his office. And then I, w- I, used to, I had to go with him to American mm-hmm. Idol back. I don't know what year. 2015, I think. Oh my god. Or 2014. Okay. But that- I, I went with him to American Idol, and I remember it was like the finale day or something, and I was like backstage. I was trying to fix my hair, so I had my phone up to see myself and like my phone. And then Jayla walked by. She go, ah, 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 no photos, no photos. And I was like, <gasps> and even like Ick. Ryan's like writer was like, oh, Oscar's just looking at himself because it was like so like awkward <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so um and then she just like like walked away and i was like oh my god like oh yeah. that's such an ick that's such an ick so I've, I've never forgiven her for that i've held that grudge and... that is weird especially if you're like backstage and you're like obviously someone to be back there you <laughs> yeah. know whatever i that's the most ick thing in the whole world i yeah. hate that so much when people do that or like at a restaurant one time george Clooney was in the same restaurant and we were just taking pictures of just like literally I didn't even know he was there and like no you can't take any pictures of Mr. Clooney and I was like where the f- where is he like he wasn't even like by me he was like in the corner so I was like what the hell like I don't know that's weird to me I'm just like mm. when people do that it's like I don't know kind of ick I've never forgotten it so that's why I look at everything a little sideways when she releases something and then that's why at first when I saw this I was like this is crazy and like over the top and pretentious but then I was like if Trisha did this I'd be like wow Would this you? is cinema yeah okay if you did it for like all your arrows I'd be like. Wow, I would love. Oh, okay, well, thank you. Okay, I'm glad. I know. Sometimes I wonder. I'm like, I wonder if your perception of me. You know, when you get to be like know someone well, and sometimes your perception changes, and you're just like, oh, actually, this person's like not that great. You know what I mean? And I always wonder that. I'm always like, because even like doing the podcast, like hearing last week where people like Trisha's a little feisty, and then this week I'm thinking, oh my god, am I really too feisty with this? I'm like, I wonder if people's perception. Like that's why podcast long format is bad for most people. It's probably bad for me too. It's like people just know way too much about you, and then they start seeing you like a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're just kind of like sometimes when I follow people, we'll get back to Jayla in a second because I have a story too. But, like, there's this girl on social media, and she – have you seen this on TikTok? It's, like, she, she had a baby, and she calls him the random man from Atlanta. Uh-uh. She's, like, this woman who had a, a baby with a random man from Atlanta. That was, like, her thing for, like, a year. Like, he didn't see it. He was kind of, like, a deadbeat dad, whatever. He had, I think I, – literally, I'm not exaggerating. Like, I think there was, like, seven other baby mamas. Um, And, like, the whole thing was about this <sighs> this baby with the random man from Atlanta. The random man from Atlanta has come back, and now she's, like – Hooking, well, she said she's not hooking up. He just kind of came back. She said they were like co parenting, taking her to Build a Bear, whatever. And the whole internet just has like come down on her and stuff like that. And she's kind of been like feisty back, like, why do y'all care? Mind y'all business. Like, you know, all something. Like she gets like really mean. And you're kind of like, she was always like this sweet and you just like really rooted for her because, you know, she's taking care of this baby and she was just funny and quirky. And then you start seeing her on live being like, okay, so why don't you guys bust it open for him? You're going to be the eighth baby mama. Like, you bust it. And I was just like, oh my God. She was getting like so, and she deleted all this stuff, obviously, like about this, whatever. Because I mean, I would be on board with her i'm like you know if she wants to get with him get with him whatever i get why people were mad at her but it's more like the reaction to it and then you see people and you're just kind of like oh man and they kind of like disappoint you because you just thought they were like you know and then i would think of that with me too i was like well i guess 
I think I've disappointed people so much that I can only kind of go up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like, so for me, it's a little different. I feel like maybe I can try and redeem myself. But like with you and me, I feel like we've always like, oh, Oscar thinks I'm cool. But then I'm like, I wonder if he still does after like doing these. He's probably like, actually, you no. Know, especially just because I'm anxious and I can be like, uh, like all over the place sometimes. I'm like, I wonder if he thinks I'm like weird or something. No, so I try no. not to even text you that much because I'm like, I just don't want to like text. I know. Weird. You do crack me up in text. I think yesterday I, you opened it. Hi there. I was like, oh, Trisha. <laughs> Hi there, wave emoji. I'm like, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like it because I knew you were gaming yesterday and I knew it was like your day off and you were like doing something fun. And I was like, God, I really don't want to bug him with this. But I was like doing my calendar and I do get so like, um, like just in my head, like I just, I don't know. It's like so weird. I'm like planning all the glam. But like, okay, I need to know if we're filming on Mondays or different days. Like, I don't know. It's like really weird. And I felt bad bothering you on Sunday. And <laughs> so funny. And sometimes when you're with someone that's like so anxious or like that or whatever, it's just like kind of like off-putting i don't know I've, there's been so many people i work with that i'm just like i'll put off from i'm just like well i don't know if i like this person i can tell you were like really thinking about what to say you know then it's like funny because at first okay. i got it i was streaming when you texted me and i was like at first i thought i was in trouble i was like oh maybe i said too oh much and then i looked and i was like oh it's Wait, just you just asked me what day because everyone's just asking me questions about like the podcast when i was streaming and i was like oh, oh you should oh. you should have someone on someone on i was Wait, like oh we've asked gee, oh it's in the it? works um oh, but oh, oh. yeah I, yeah no, I don't, that, uh, maybe i should be watching this i love that though i haven't seen anything oh please capture his streams and put it on tiktok so i can see because that's the only place i'll see stuff that's actually so funny uh i know because then i was like oh i was scared for a second you guys but she just asked oh were <laughs> you live yes that is so funny and my funny. face like i got silent and my face wouldn't like it's like haha Oh, I would be so scared too. I'd be just scared in general, not even like working like with me or whatever. Just in general, I always think like, should I have not said that about this person? You know, even in interviews, I'm like, well, I know this person. Should I not say that? Like with the Brooke thing, when she was like, when everyone was talking about Matt Rife and I knew she dated him, I'm like, do I say it? Do I not? Did I say too much? You know, it is kind of like one of those things. I totally get that. Oh, and live is crazy. I don't know how you do it. Like live is so scary because you say something and it's just like out there. Yeah. I, I was know. like very careful about everything I said. Oh, man, I don't care. Um, and I think in general, I'm like, I try to be wholesome in general i think too so i have the, i'm not like that uncensored like wild person who just like yeah. you know goes off and i was talking I feel like you could be i definitely could be I yeah, think. yeah yeah now that I, I see more of you and not in a bad way but i see more like unhinged i was like oh you know what <laughs> yeah. and not again not a bad way i was thought you were just like so quiet reserved and i'm like no you could be renee no, for sure i definitely <laughs> like, yes oh, no. like, that is yeah. that's actually very tea because yeah, i yeah. i'm like feistier that i think even I kind of surprised myself yeah. with like getting feisty. So, but, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of fun. It's yeah. good. It's better to be that than like, like who was it on the drag race yesterday? She's like, Rue's like, did you just call yourself loud? And she's oh. like, yeah, I think I am. She goes, she goes, yeah. Maya, poor yeah. Maya, yeah, who's just like so quiet and reserved. Yeah, you can't like. <laughs> and Rue's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you think you're loud and crazy. <laughs> I know. It's like, especially in like media too, because people, you can kind of get walked all over, you know? And I, for the most part, I'm like very Ariana, yes, and coded. Like, oh, okay. Like I go with the flow. Yeah. But there's some times where I definitely get a little spicy, I think. So don't count me out, anyone, I guess. I'm like, more passive until I get pushed and then I get crazy. And that's when people give me the crazy one. And then I'm just like... <laughs> then I go off. I'm just like, yeah. no, like you can't keep doing this, doing this. And then I go crazy. That's why I try and like acknowledge things in the present when things like bother me like if people are trying to rewrite history or something or like say something happened then i'm like okay i'm gonna acknowledge in the moment so it doesn't like boil up and then i get mad yeah. you know what i mean and then keep it moving from there but yeah, <laughs> yeah i like to just be i like to be like passive just go with the flow until people like screw you over or something and, yeah. then, and then they always get scared like oh okay what happened well i was like well <laughs> i'm actually just like now telling you i don't know setting boundaries yeah yeah but what's your j-lo story oh, we have well, to get back to that yeah so it was american idol probably was oh. 2015 too it was like when i was with style hall there was one of those mcns and they got me like a brand deal to like go to american idol and um like part of it was taking pictures with the judges like they come oh. in the room and they you know you take pictures with them like literally that's it and just post about it whatever and it was kind of similar it was the j-lo one and she it's like literally they come into a room of influencers and like there was probably 20 of us and like they're literally their job is to like selfies and everyone's really nice i think i got one with Keith Urban was the one. Ryan Seacrest was there. I don't know who the other one was, but J-Lo definitely was there. And so we were all like taking pictures, taking pictures. And um, it comes to me because I'm like in the light and you're literally getting paid to do this. So then I go take the picture and J-Lo like looks around, like looks at this like other person. They're like with her, like whatever. And then they're like, hey, yeah, whatever. And she's like, she just told me like her side, like I have the picture. I should see if I find it. Maybe you could Google, maybe it's on Google or something like that. She said she had to be on like a certain side. So she's like this. But I'm also like this, so we're just whatever. And then at the end of it, she's just like, don't touch me. And I was like, I didn't even touch Oh, my her. God. Unless I maybe put my hand on her. I don't think I did, though. I think this was, like, after Britney Spears, where I knew not to touch. 
but she just went, don't touch me. And then just like left. And I was like, ah! Oh my God. Yeah. And I'm like, I, didn't, I really didn't think I did. I don't know. It was really weird and like was off putting the whole thing like that. But she was, um, yeah, that was, that was the only, cause like even Ellen and all those people like Tyra, they're just like, they're just not, they just don't talk to you period. Yeah. But to have someone be like, don't actually Ellen, they were told not to look at Ellen. So I don't know. That was and actually on Ellen, I go like this. I'm like, oh, I'm not supposed to touch you. Oh, they say I that remember too. that. So I yeah. think I've been like traumatized enough to not touch. But that was before J Lo too. So anyways, that's my quick little one. But I had this picture. It's me and J Lo, and I have like this like white blonde hair. And it's like this horrible lighting. But I wasn't that pressed to meet her. I wasn't like oh, I'm gonna meet J Lo. Like I wasn't a stan. So yeah. Anyways, J Lo um, seems. You know, I think she just has. I think she's like diva diva. Because isn't she the one that said she didn't know Mariah Carey? Or Mariah Carey said she didn't know her. Yeah. Which one? I think Mariah said she doesn't know J Lo. Yeah. Oh, right, because then I saw a clip of J-Lo. I think she was on – she was on Wendy, actually. And Wendy was like, we don't know her or something like that. And then she was, oh, yeah, Mariah seems to be forgetful or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. She, but the fact that she was on Wendy Williams I was like, okay. That right also on. reminds me – that's why – did you see Renee Rapp, like, clamoring for Wendy? I, which is crazy to me. That's a, Wendy is more than a millennial. She's also old, Renee Rapp. <laughs> she's 50, so. <laughs> okay, again, you're taking it too – literal too serious. Well, but. she's just saying. <laughs> she's like, I should like old people. Over, Wendy's old. <laughs> I can see. She wanted her first serious interview to be with her, like yeah. Oprah style with Wendy Williams. Yeah. Poor Wendy. She knew how many days she was missing. I know. Too. That's why I love. Renee is also a little Trish code. You got to let the ages thing go because I think she was just being unserious. And I think if you actually like had a key with Renee, you would get along. Yeah, and I like her. She's I a do girly. like her. Yeah. I like the, that she liked Wendy. That I would never think she was like a Wendy girly <laughs> at all. And I love that that she wanted her first interview with her. No, I do like Renee. I do. Like I said, I think when something rubs me the wrong way, then I like write someone off. I'm like, ee, okay. But um, it's like if a guy, like the only time I'm like hard on guys, I feel is like if they like think it's okay to date someone that's like 18 or 19 or something like that, you know, I, then I'm like, oh, that automatically is like ick. like Dane Cook, like. Nick Vi you know, like any of those people, I'm just like, nah, no, I'm good. You know what I mean? So I do come for guys too. But uh yeah, I think when something rubs but I like Renee and I like the Rundy thing. Um, I don't think she would come back. Maybe no, I don't think she would come back for anyone. I think Wendy's just maybe not doing well. Right? Yeah. Physically or yeah. mentally. Or maybe she's just over it. Like Richard Simmons has been gone for like ten years mm -hmm. and he's just I kinda like that too. I kinda like the idea of just I probably one maybe one day I would be just over it. I don't know. Bow out, yeah. Yeah, I think there's something kind of cool about that. Mm. Kind of Gabby Hanna coded, I guess. Gabby's back. I know. Why you kind of say, would you say it or I don't know. I like went to go look yeah. too because I remember we kind of briefly talked about it last week, but now it's kind of mainstream. And actually, like looking at the video, I feel like she's the one that's actually making it, so that made me feel better. Definitely, you know the what I mean. The script, yeah, yeah she's yeah. Because yeah, all their other reels and like TikToks for that YMCA were not like the level of you know Gabby's. Yeah, so Gabby's I was like a full on promo. I want to take that class. I know. I was like almost emotional. I was like, I'm actually so happy for her because yeah. she seemed like. The original, like, Gabby energy that everyone, mm -hmm. like, fell in love with. You know, like, the lightness. Oh, the... yeah. And that's what everyone was saying, too. Even on TikTok, everyone was really supportive because they're like, oh, yeah, she's always, like, loved fitness and dancing. And, like, that makes sense that she would be doing yeah. this. And she looked good and she looked happy. And I feel like there is something to that. I feel like, yeah, you can tell when someone's, like, genuinely not happy doing social media. And mm -hmm. I feel like she was kind of there for a minute. And she seems happy, which is good. Yeah. And that, the video is everything. And then, but I, honestly, I would totally take that class. I'd be like, yes, Same. we'll take it. Yeah. I'm like, that's awesome. So fun. She should do it like that. Like Richard Simmons used to do classes like that in Beverly Hills. And people would go like every Saturday and they'd like do it. Yeah. She should do that. That'd be – I wonder if fans show up. I'm sure now maybe – I think some people said like, oh, like I'm 45 minutes away, but I want to take that class because it Aww. looks so fun. So – That's cute. I love that for her. Mm -hmm. I think she's just – Living, she looked ha like she looked happy, which is good. You know, like sometimes you go back and you get spiral in your hometown or whatever. Yeah. But she almost looked like she was like thriving back there. Maybe mm -hmm. it was like better for her. I feel like that in general. I I think she's a really good performer and entertainer, but it can like can like mess with you, especially like social media and being an influencer, like with numbers and followers. Like it can just like mentally destroy you for sure. Yeah, and if you get like too caught up in it, and then you, I think she said this too when she was on like that spa like wellness podcast like, <laughs> like she got podcast. i want to go on that one who I know, is that, that person seems, i don't yeah. know but that seems like a good it. like yeah. vibe over there relaxing um <laughs> like literally their feet are in like the water yeah. i was like i want to go on that podcast. But she was like i just got too like caught up in like the negative stuff and she's like it just is like a product of being in that mm -hmm. like social media industry and i looking back like that totally makes sense you know um so yeah. i was like really happy for that she seemed like so happy there were people being shady like oh like she has to do this now i'm like if you are coming for anyone <laughs> who like leaves social media to actually to 
actually work like a actual job, you know, you're a loser, I think. Like, oh, let people sure. do whatever they want to do. Let people work. I think the guy from like the original Charlie Bucket, I just saw him on like TikTok and he said he like got a regular job afterwards. And people are so lame for that. I always think that's so lame no matter what. It's like people have to work, you know what I mean? Yeah. And people who do work. And honestly, back to the, on Gabby Hanna specifically, I don't know if she even has to. She's always said she's like super like cheap, doesn't spend her money. She's had like, I think she said she had a 15 year lease on her home, which is like crazy, which means you put a lot down. She sold the home. So that's like millions of dollars right there. Like, I think she's fine because she yeah. was making like during the vlogs while Liza Koshy did. Obviously, I don't know her financials, which is like from that era and knowing how much I made and like knowing that she was getting like the same number. She made a ton of money. Mm -hmm. and she was sure driving she's like fine. the same car for like a long time. That was too. her thing. Yeah, she yeah. had a Honda since like high school or something yeah. like that. So I think if anything, she's been really good with her money and she probably doesn't have to because she took so much time off. She like didn't do social media for like a year and I, I don't think I could take a year off. So I think – and also like – uh, these kind of instructors, like it's not like they make a ton. She's probably doing it for fun, you know. It's yeah. like maybe not making like a ton, or maybe she is. I don't know. Maybe she is, but I'm just saying. I don't think she, she seems needs passionate it. about it, regardless. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, people are so lame for that. Yeah, That's so stupid. Honestly, let's applaud anyone who leaves social media and works an actual job. I think because exactly. these days it's kind of rare. If you can work, like that is the that is the case. Like I I actually respect people more when they can go and like get a job, like work and contribute to society. Yeah, <sighs> it's like, a whole thing. I saw even like. Do you remember Alex Ernst? Is that his last name? Oh, he was yeah. in the vlog mm -hmm. Even he is like working a normal job and he's yeah. like anyone who was like – Panhandling. He, yeah. He was mm -hmm. like, yeah. just get a job. Like, <laughs> yeah. Know? And that, oh, I, I've always loved Alex. I have one person in the vlog squad is – I don't know if he con was considered that, but I think he was. He was so nice, so cool. Like I always really liked him. He always like – would say if something was weird or wrong or something like that. And I like that. Is he working a regular job? He had posted when a lot of the TikTok live things were going on. He was just like, here's something you could do. Get a real fucking job. And he was yeah. like, it was him like coming back from work when he was saying that. So yeah, it's again, I respect anyone's hustle, especially online, like do what you have to do. You know what I mean? But it's like, as long as there's like a hustle and you're providing something, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, I just think there, that is, I mean, and there, and it's a lot of people. There's a lot of people online that are doing this right now. And it's just like – because the thing is TikTok Live is like so many kids. So, you know, or just like young people like whatever. And it's just like – I don't know. Just ask – I don't know. There's something like weird. There's just so many things you can do as an influencer to provide like a service or something, Some you know. Some entertainment, yeah. Some sort of entertainment. I mean I – there's been highs and lows and I've always just found a way to like make money. And, and some people don't think it's like respectable some of the stuff I've done. But it's like, hey, like at least I'm providing <laughs> yeah. a product something. or a service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it is it is wild, but I, I love that for her. I really always have had a soft spot for Gabby. Like, I know we'll never be, like, eye to eye and, like, be friends, but I've always, like, felt for her and always liked her. And I, always, I did always think she was, like, talented, so. Mm -hmm. We love to see that. I love to see influencers, you know, just living their life. Yeah, and I think, too, like, it's easy to say that, you know, you're changed or things are different, but the fact that she, like, went off mm -hmm. and, like, actually did the work and is, like, has such, like, a – like a fresh like perspective on life now yeah. you know like she actually put her money where her mouth is mm -hmm. and she did it and so she deserves like all the Definitely. happiness right now yeah, yeah she looks great i would totally take it i would love to do those classes those would be so fun i used I to love that looks classes. really fun when after my pregnancy i'm thinking when i get back into dancing i want to like do my dance videos again or at least just do it for fun you know yeah. not even like post them or something like that because i love dancing and she looked good she's always had a good body yeah her fitness journey has always been like so great so it makes yeah. sense for her this whole mm -hmm. era i would take it i would take the richard simmons classes too i wish she'd come back i know did you probably sure yeah he's like uh richard simmons denounced it he's like i have nothing to do with it um and oh he's richard simmons said it. something mm -hmm. oh so wh how who got that statement because no one's seen him in so long whoever he works with put out a statement that he's like denouncing this new biopic that's coming out mm. about him and that he has nothing to do with it and he didn't want it happening oh. um so i'd be surprised it kind of sucks if some if the topic of the biopic is like saying i don't want it like i feel like you should respect that right, right. and like I, not do well, it but people do it who was it there was one just recent oh the pam and tommy one. Oh yeah yeah they didn't pam, want that out yeah. either and i was just like mm, yeah it's weird that it's crazy to me people can just make the story i know about it and without... like use your name and stuff right yeah so There's... priscilla like they shake it they couldn't use she any did, yeah. music they couldn't use Priscilla agreed to it, but yeah, they would. Elvis, the Elvis the, estate, yeah, yeah, they wouldn't let him use any of the music. That's why it's like I will always love you when stuff was in there. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, well, it makes sense because that one kind of put Elvis in a little bit of a bad light. Which is like all these movies. I think they're all a little exaggerated, anyways. For I, I don't know. I'm not trying to defend it, but I'm just saying like they all seem a little exaggerated. 
E.T., by the way, they kind of copied my bling microphone, I feel like. When did they start that? <laughs> when did E.T. start the bling microphone? I don't know. I just noticed it recently. Maybe it's been a while. It's only used for award shows. Mm, I've never seen a bling <laughs> microphone, E.T. I see But maybe you. they, I like all my coworkers, because a lot of them are like older millennial women, Renee Rapka. <laughs> Um, and they watch Call Her Daddy. So they all like came to me after watching Call Her Daddy. Oh, and I was like, so oh, like, I didn't, all I knew about Trisha is that you worked with her, but wow, she's like, her story is amazing. Aww. Like they're, yeah, it was very cute. Well, I'm glad I was so nervous because I, I did ask for some stuff to be cut from it because I don't know why I just was like, let me share my entire life story. <laughs> and I was, I felt heavy at the time and I was just like. And even like we were saying, someone was there helping us, whatever. It's, it was this company I was with, anyways. I'm not whatever. And so they were like, "Oh, this is like so. Is this okay for her to be sharing all this stuff? She's so vulnerable and stuff like." That. It was like weird. So after that, I was like, "Did I share too much? Was it too dark? Was it?" I never want people to like, well, one think that I'm like lying, but two, I never want people to like get too like dark with me or something I don't yeah. know, like that. Um, because there are <laughs> the, like I do, and I talked about this on the podcast too, where I'll say numbers like, "Oh, it happened like a hundred times," and so I think I said kidnapping like forty times. Look, I did i was i think people said it's abducted i think people were with me they're like it's actually abducted if you're over 18 like i don't know i don't know what you call it, drugged abducted i was something but i think it did happen like a dozen times i think it said 40 and then everyone it, it seems unbelievable when i say i was kidnapped <laughs> yeah. 40 times but i always exaggerate the number i got it so that's why i'm like literally even talking about the man, random man from land i'm like no there was actually seven baby mamas there's no like exaggeration because i don't want people to think i'm exaggerating but i'm glad it was well received i was very nervous about it i also just did not look good that day my outfit didn't fit it just was like a whole mess but uh, I was very excited to be on there. Yeah, no, no big podcast ever asked me to be on, so I was stoked about that. No, it was good. It was so entertaining nice. too. I mean, I don't really watch Color Daddy like that. Obviously, that one I'd like re-download the Spotify app. I was like, let me make <laughs> oh, my did account. You? Wow. Yeah, I really went through all the hoops Spotify, for that episode. Give us a deal. We'll take sixty million dollars. <laughs> She that house is like a content house. Like I thought she lived there. It's like this like fancy house in West Hollywood. And she goes, no, this is just like a content so house. Slay. I was like, yeah, so slay. I was like, and they had so many people. A fun fact about that too: the audio didn't record for the first like oh, twenty yeah, minutes. Nothing. Did it say? I was like, oh my god, this is literally us over here. They had like fancy everything, and I was like, wow, you guys. Have, I was like, shocked the... to hear that. Yeah, because yeah. they're such a production. I they was had like, oh, production. They, they had like a ton of people there, and then when and that's like my biggest thing. I hate, and obviously like it happens, whatever. But when it happens here, I'm like, I can't. I'm not gonna re because I think they said to like just like redo it. I'm like, I can't like I, I like physically can't just pretend like all that didn't happen and you know when the flow is going it feels good it happened once with Zach saying I'm like keep it in I'm like we can't go <laughs> yeah, back yeah. it's so anyways they should hire Moses I was so shocked I was like because they have they have a lot of people no but they uh they just installed a whole new system oh so they were just Testing still learning, yeah. still learning their own I mean, system. But there was like person taking paparazzi photos of like me and Moses as we're leaving. Like they sent those, and then there's someone taking film. There was someone doing TikToks on the YouTube, and it was just like this whole someone cooking and preparing the stuff. I was like, this is like production. The this side is, is also so cute. Like yeah. I love all the little knickknacks in the background. Mm, and very it's like cute. there's a little blur in the back. I was like, wow, this is so like cinematic. It, it was, was wild. Yes. Very, like very thought out. Yeah. And, it was, and she it was, was she was super nice, and she was uh, she like was we saw nice in her stories too, and everything. Like she yeah, really she loved, and she really promoted yeah. it. Then. You thought she was putting on the laugh a little bit. I thought she, I could tell she was <laughs> genuinely like I didn't know. very knee coated, like very giggly, like that's yeah, the whole thing. It was cute. It was very cute. I liked her, and you know what? Because I and I told her from the get, I was like, just so you know, I'm sure there's a clip of me being like, <laughs> this girl's annoying. Because like I remember back specifically, but I told you we watched it, and she was like really cool about it. She goes, yeah, I've like said stuff to. She's like super cool. That's why I always try to give people grace when it comes to like me. Like even with the Colleen thing, I literally I remember when confronting you not to go back to that, but I remember being like, girl, it's okay. Like I've said stuff about people. Like just tell me if like you did. Like it's fine. It was before you knew me, and to still deny it, I'm like, I'm giving you an out. Like I'm, I would be so yeah. forgiving of that. Like it was, anyways. Then when he about it but when people have like talked bad about me when i'm like i forgive because obviously oh my god i literally did that i saw him we saw larry oh do you know him really we yeah. saw him at a target parking lot a random target like really far out like even further than we live and i kind of saw him in the corner right but i didn't know like you didn't know you know you don't know and he was literally right next to us we had our little lincoln he had his little tesla and he was like backing out and then he's like hi and then i said hi because i'm like okay i'm assuming he's like can i give you a hug but i didn't introduce he's like said hi to moses in malibu but i didn't want to like say like hey, this is because i just didn't know for sure because he looked a little different his hair was a little different but then i looked him up i'm like oh that was him but anyways um he was like super super nice like so nice and he was very like oh you know you're so blessed like god bless like he was super oh, sweet, sweet gave me a hug got out of his house like really really like actually like overtly nice but i always thought like i always have to think like oh god especially tiktokers i'm like did i talk bad about them especially in like 2020 in my era of just coming for tiktokers i was like oh because you know you get a little scared you don't know if i should apologize i'm like do i apologize to this person um 
Actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone last week I had talked about during 2020, and I apologize. And she was, like, so nice. She literally was like, no, like, it's fine. I get it. And she's, like, literally, like, 21. And I was like, oh, my God, you guys are so mature. So with him, <laughs> I was like, because he had that music video with all those TikTokers, remember? Oh, yeah. It had, like, 121 million. It was, like, him in a school room with, like, Charlie and Addison. And I was just like, did I talk crap about him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it, it seemed like he let it go if I did. I, mean, I don't I don't think I did. I don't think I would have. But um, he still gets really good views and he's really nice. And he lives out here too. Everyone lives out here. It's crazy. But um, yeah, whenever I see people, I'm always like, oh, so sorry. Apologies in advance. <laughs> in advance. Where did that come from? Where did we talk about? <laughs> oh, call her daddy. Oh, We're yes, yes, daddy. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was good. I don't really do um, podcasts because this one takes up so much time. <laughs> I do like yeah. two interviews a week and then we do the hot topics and then we have Patreon. I mean, this whole day. At least one cover for the shoot the week for a magazine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know i've only done one this month i should get on it because i don't know it comes out next next month i guess i don't know i don't know if that's the cover it's a big magazine in the uk i don't think it's the cover i would love to be on the cover of it uh seeing so people i should apologize to i got addison ray we got one next to you oh i was wondering yes what... <laughs> these are the addison ray fragrances this is happy we have happy oh, wow. AF. wait why is it af hyped af and chill af why are they called the f at the end I, I mean, guess, know what it means, yeah. but it's very weekend coded. Wait, what? How? The, he has that song. I'm only when it's hot. A F. Wait, what? <laughs> That's a weekend song. Is you it? know it? I mean, I know that song, and I don't know the words. To that it. doesn't sound like it's the words. Only na 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 dance. Yeah. He's, uh, anyway, yes. No, can you say it? We'll censor it. What is the words? I only da na na na. As f what do you mean? <laughs> does he say A F in it, or does he say as? No, he says no. He says the fool. Oh, but since then, AF, AF has been. He's not saying I'm only chill AF. Okay. <laughs> but ever since then, AF has been. She took that from being the weekend. Thing. I think Addison Rae is a secret <laughs> XO weekend fan. <laughs> so he says. I don't even know. I like that song. I thought the words were, and I obviously I'm very wrong. Let me hear. You only call me when it's hot yeah. outside. Oh, I thought you only... maybe maybe that's the clean version. Yeah, the <laughs> in the radio, the, the Ryan Seacrest one. Yeah, I thought it was. You only call me when it's half past twelve. <laughs> <laughs> maybe half past nine. Uh oh, you only call me when it's half the. I don't know. I don't know. The weekend songs sometimes are a little harder to understand. The blinding lights one too. I'm just like, uh. Wait, was it? I'm blinded by the lights. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. Touch. touch. That's all I know is touch. <laughs> There's what? Yeah. I actually don't. Wait. I can't. I want to feel your. I don't know. I actually have no idea. <laughs> no idea. There's only a few songs where I know what he's saying and I, I'm here for it. All right. So anyways, I got this. You don't have to spray. You can if you want. Moses hates sprays, but I'll spray anyways. It doesn't matter if he's far <laughs> enough. He sticks it. Okay. Which one are you spraying? I, I'm going to smell them all first before I decide. Ooh, that one is. Oh, this one is. Potent. Oh my gosh. No Addison Race Lander because I love her so much. I think I like which one did you say was potent? The yellow. Oh shoot, that's the one I was Did you spray it? That one I, I didn't just... spray it though, I just sniffed it. This one's good. This one's it's very fresh. Which this is the you're the, trying I'm trying hyped AF. Hyped. Oh, you're gonna be hyped. <laughs> Get that ADHD that's what medication I need. on yeah. deck. <laughs> oh, citrusy, right? Wait. Is it Mandarin and White Woods? That's fresh. They're all kind of fresh. This one's fresh too. Mm. Are you a body spray girly? I am. Or well, man. I don't want to miss you. Um, <laughs> Man. Right now I do the Billie Eilish fragrance. I think it's unisex, actually. The one that's like her mold? Yes. That I do that cool. one. And I also do, it's a philosophy one that I saw on TikTok. Cashmere or something. Really? So I mix the two. I haven't seen that one. Um, I've seen the Billie Eilish one, but. I love the Billie Eilish one. It's like, so I mix them both. It's my own little concoction. Oh. Yeah. That's very TikTok coded because people mix the Billie Eilish with the Tom Ford vanilla sex. Oh, yeah. that is, yeah. Because the philosophy one is like vanilla something else. So it's like. It's similar, but a little different. Warms it up. I feel like this one I'd bring to the gym. Like after the gym, you want to oh, do a quick spray. Yeah. Do you shower at the gym? No. I don't either. Oh my God, no. That seems like a lot. Yeah. Like and you're doing a full scrub in the shower. I remember looking up and like a tile was missing from the shower, like in the little oh. stall. And you could just see like the dirty like in Ew. innards of the ceiling and i was like this isn't the vibe <laughs> yeah i also feel like athlete's foot and stuff i don't know yeah i was like walking around my little sandals i'm like uh it's like oh, yeah. too much too just much just do it when you get home yeah like i don't know why people do it i mean do you, i guess they, they, if you go to work i guess but now i just do it if i have to work in the morning i'll just work out after because i just can't i can't you work, work out every day five five or six days yeah oh my god yeah. so like when did you you did it this morning mm -hmm. wow <sighs> I'm, I'm ready to start it, but 
<laughs> not for five more months, yeah, maybe eight months, because they know I have to postpartum yes, and yes, C-section. Yes. You know, it's going to be a whole thing, but I will get there. It's not now. I'm just enjoying eating spaghetti <laughs> bolognese every day. I do that. I feel like every time I say that, people think I get paid. Someone said that. They're like, I feel like you get $25,000 if you say bolognese. Can like, you imagine if, that, <laughs> if you were sponsored by... Who like ragu or something? <laughs> like, I have oh no, I have a bling juicy couture shirt uh, or tracksuit, and it's it's R A O Rao sauce. Oh yeah, they did a red one with like bling. Ra- I bought it. I didn't get sponsored. Oh, I was but- like, wow, <laughs> that sauce is kind of expensive. Is it? I mean, it's like nine dollars wow. compared to like ragu. It's like three. You I know? love ragu too. Me too. I think it was Fabio who told me he got paid if he mentioned I can't believe it's not butter in his interviews. Really? Yeah. I think he got, I don't know how much, but he told me he like got paid. That's for fierce. Him. I would love for that to happen. Oh God, just to say your like tagline everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like because we talk about so many things anyway. So if we got like paid to do it, like- oh, especially to just like you would have. What is it like? Bloom, I think, pays just to have it like sit, sitting in your TikTok. Yeah. And I was like, God, that would be that's the best kind of. Then no one can harass just our sponsors. Random product placement. Yeah. Addison Ray sponsored us today. <laughs> we love these. I mean, this girl is like branding. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of branding and celebrity products, we were at Walmart and we were looking for the popcorn. They didn't have it, but Kelly Clarkson also has popcorn. Does she? She has barbecue popcorn. Like That's honey random. Barbecue. Why is everyone doing popcorn? It's like the coffee. Everyone's doing popcorn. Someone else is doing popcorn too. I wonder why. I think popcorn is like it's like a snack, but like the healthier version of chips, right? It's like lighter. Like is I that don't know. It? I I think oh maybe because also all the chips now are like popcorn chips. You know. What do you mean popcorn chips? Yes, you have some in. I guess does your mom get them? You have some oh, in the green room. Chips, but they're like pop. They're made out of popcorn. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> That's my mom doing crafty in there. I don't think I've ever had a. Oh, I have a pop chip. Have you Have you had them? Are they just airy? Yeah, they're super airy. Did you try them? I haven't tried. Yeah, them. I had some last week when I or whenever I was here. We should restock. I know. I feel like because I never seen anyone eat them, but then I was like, I think like glam is what they like to. I don't know, but I'm like, we'll restock it. Because we're, I think we got the Cheez Its. I'm on the Cheez Its kick right now. I but, do love a Cheez It. Uh, Cheez Its so is good. just like so satisfying. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It feels like you ate something good. Yeah. I used cheese. to love, well, I still do actually. When I was little though, I thought Cheez Its and grapes was like eating cheese and wine. Ooh, that's so classy. I thought fancy. Yeah. That's very uh, like Critics Choice coded. Yes. But did you see the little the charcuterie pizza in the box? Bag and stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. But then they also gave them a charcuterie box. Yes. Did you see it? I thought like, it was shoved- cute. Did you see people like were hating on it? I was hating on it. Did you see really? the one, the one of the color purple cast? Yes, when they saw it. So which one are you? It says which one are you? Are you the Fantasia who's like where's the lamb chops? Are you Taraji P eating the pizza? Are you Oprah who's like I'm not eating pizza? I'm definitely Taraji coded. I love like that's why I don't like any fancy events in general, especially even like weddings and stuff when it's like fancy food or whatever. I'm like. I'm happy with just like a pizza, a chicken mm. tender, a French fry. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm like a simple eater and stuff. Me too. We went to – have you been to Wovu? No. Oh, wait. We talked about it was, though. Did Brooke, Brooke, yes. Okay, so literally we were in that area on like – I think it was on MLK Day. We took um, Malibu to like an indoor playground over there. And so I was like, ooh, a Wovu. It's like down the street and it's pasta. And it was like this fancy like pasta. It was literally like Wagyu bolognese. And we got that. And it was like, I don't know, like 30 bucks or whatever for this pasta. And it was like so tiny. I mean, we split three pastas between us. And I still was like not full. I was like, I'd rather have your bolognese all day where it's just the big gorilla box, two pounds, just like eating. Like that's so much better than going to these – like so tiny, so little. Like – was okay, but they gave us the tiniest little meat, the little way. That sounds very clean girl aesthetic. I imagine like the clean girls probably go to eat oh, there. Oh, definitely you know? clean girl aesthetic. Well, clean girls out now. It's mob wife aesthetic is in. <laughs> so maybe that'll be my next outfit for the next hot topics because <laughs> clean girls out, and I'm happy about that because like you know it was cute, but also just too basic for me. You know, I can't really go with the clean girl look. Yeah, I think you can only do it if you're like Brooke or someone who's just like beautiful, just naturally and doesn't need anything, mm-hmm. no gimmick around it. <laughs> You know, just wear a bodysuit and show up. It's like, I need a theme. I need to have, like, a gimmick or something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that place is cute. It's in Studio City. It's, like, this, like, whole shopping area where there, there's, like, an air wand over there. You haven't been oh, over there? Mm-mm. Oh, I guess, you're, I guess you're kind of out this way. I always forget you're, like, out this way. Yeah, I, I don't really like to leave. I'm very you coded yes. with that. I don't, like, leave the little bubble. You I know. know. I love that you are so close for that reason, too, because anyone who comes out this way is like, you're so far. Yeah. But I love when people are just in the area and they just get it. Mm-hmm. I love that area. We were over there the other day. Where did we Oh, we were at Red Lobster. It was, like, Fox Hills area. They had a Walmart. We had to go get Walmart for this birthday party. This toy. It was a whole thing. But but the Red Lobster was a hit. I want to go to get Cinnabons on Wednesdays. They have pink icing for oh, Mean Girls. Fun. But it always seems so far. I like, want to go. And I'm like, oh, it's so far for a Cinnabon. But I love Cinnabon. Ah, why do I have evil gays on here? What is that? Jennifer Coolidge in her Emmy speech. Oh, she thanked the evil. Okay, I was yeah. like, which one? Who's the evil gays? <laughs> Lucy DeLuca made her way out of my card. <laughs> Who else would be an evil gay? Not a bad way. It's a cute way. We're saying it in a cute oh, way. Oh, I was going to think of a not cute way. Um, oh, wait. Who are you going to say in a not cute? 
If they're evil, it's fine. Right? I don't know. Well, I don't. The, they're the okay. kind of evil where they would. They, you, if you give a, a mouse curse. a cra- if you give a mouse a cracker, is, okay. uh, is that what they say? What a mouse? You a give cookie. a mouse a cookie. You know. What's the end of that saying? Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> if you give a mouse a cookie, interesting. Yeah. It keeps coming back into your house yeah, or something. E- what's a cute evil gay? What's like a cute um, plain Jane? Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. People, okay. I didn't know how we were supposed to feel about her because on Twitter people were like, mm. "It's mixed." Yeah. Sometimes it's like too mean. <gasps> Wait. I don't. But... Know I, maybe I missed something. I didn't think it. I don't know. Maybe I again. I could have missed something because again, like we're watching this. Like you have to see night. Untucked because oh. that's where it all went down. What do you say? She if said, you're not watching Untucked, you're only getting half the story. Is what is the catchphrase? Uh, so I guess well, it is okay. true. Yeah. <laughs> with half the stories <laughs> i'm good with that i don't need she more she just like randomly was like they were just like randomly talking all of a sudden she turns to a mandatory and was like your makeup is ugly you look busted and like was just going oh. in on her <laughs> out of nowhere like just abrupt oh. decided to go in on her so it was very mixed and people were like oh it's fun shady but then amanda was clapping back on twitter was like Mm-mm, no like oh, she, she was didn't not think having of it, it. As fun yeah or shady. yeah mm-hmm. it was i mean plain jane definitely rises the line of going like very mean is it shade or is it just a bitchiness you know it's a yeah. fine line so. well i think it's almost like the whole i'm a comedian it's like okay but it's like if you're actually funny it like yeah. works you know i don't know i i think she's fine on the show i don't see her as like being mean but i don't watch on top yeah so. we're back on Drag i know we always thought we keep coming back <laughs> uh derek and alex from our producers also asked us to talk about Lana for Skims. Oh, yeah. What I thought it was think? beautiful. She yeah. looked great. And Kim, you got to give it to Everyone. her. She gets, Her little campaigns are always eating. Every single one. Yeah, and they're probably not even that expensive. Like, you look at those shoots and they're like yeah. kind of simple. And they probably make so much. Yeah, and I think probably the money just goes into getting whoever, you know? So that's what I wonder. Do you think, how much do you think they get paid? I don't know. Probably a lot, I would imagine. Because they're like the face of the campaign. But also, I feel like because it's Kim, people are like, oh, it's cool to be a part of the... I know. I don't know. I don't think they'll ever have us because I feel like we've talked not great. Like, I like the Kardashians, but I feel like we critique them too much. I get that, yeah. They probably won't have us doing skims anytime soon. I know. When I interviewed Kim, when she saw me, I interviewed her twice. And so after the first time was very unserious. And then the second time, she was like, oh, thank God it's you. Like, she was very relieved wow. to see me. Yeah. She remembered you? She remembered. And she was like, oh, we have to get ca- uh, salads and calabasas. Because that was my little shit. Because I'm like, I'm from Woodland Hills. Calabasas oh adjacent. My, I, yeah. Oh, my God. You really shoot your shot. I would be too nervous. <laughs> I would never. I love it, though. I was very um, – when it comes to journalism, I tend to get a little unserious. That's why I, I stand with Renee Rapp because I get it. <laughs> but um, I've never felt that with you. I always thought you were so, like, so professional. Like, okay, thank you. Bye. Like, it was I think never it depends cute. Who, and it, I kind of read the room and get the vibe. You know what I mean? Like, and especially I feel like with someone like Kim, it's not like she's a serious artist or something. You know, it's like <laughs> the way in, I think, is to be endearing and then you get mm. the stuff. You kind of have to know how to navigate and how to win people over, I, I think. I do it. I would just be weird and give weird vibes for sure. That's how I was with Taylor too. When I met her, I was like very just like I was throwing it all out there. But now if I did it again, I feel like she's older now and like it responds more to like actual conversation. So I tell myself if I meet Taylor again, it'd be very like, it's good to see you. I'd be very cute. Baby girl cute, coded. polite. Baby girl coded. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be as like, oh, wig queen. Yeah, slay. Like, you Is know. that how you wear the – that though i love i love a guy who'd be more like that i think she liked it at the time but now i she's think a different person yeah because she's so famous now i think she'd respond to this being treated like normal you know mm, that's a tough one you have to know, yeah you kind of just have to know the vibe i feel like people. when someone hopefully is this political correct to say when someone acts super gay i love it like it makes me feel safe like if i didn't know you and i was coming to see you i would be super gay okay you know that's what i love yeah, yeah. it's like i only tailor my interactions to people when i like know their vibe yeah yeah and yeah, they, yeah. they bring out different sides of like my personality so Kim too, I knew that she would respond to like the Aww. the gay like uh, girly, endearing. Wow. You're good. Valley girl vibe, you know. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. she also you, that's where she came from. Those yeah, are her roots. She gets it. She loves it. Yeah. Okay, I love that too. I think that's super cute. I think Kim is copying us again because you guys will see in our Patreon we have a little Patreon setup and we have the pink sequence. Did you see it when you yeah. walked in? We have a little pink sequence backdrops in Kim's stories yesterday. Well, I guess it hasn't been out there yet, so I don't know if she copied us. But uh, <laughs> she had the same pink sequence backdrop. Oh my god! I think it's probably still there. And she was at—I don't know what it was. It was some party. I, I think Skims was sponsored. It's probably still on there. The exact same. 
the same color, the same Amazon tiles. I was like, hmm. God, her stories are, oh wait, no, there it is. Oh my God, you're right. You I'm screenshotting. Maybe she watched, <laughs> maybe she used to watch the previous. Maybe she saw our other podcast and was like, I'm going to get that in pink. Because it's Skims, right? Skims is sponsoring something. Yeah. That's what it looks like. But these are like cheap Amazon things. And I was like, why, why does she have that? That's so random. But also love. Oh no, it was a bot mitzvah. But, so. she, but Skims sponsored because there's like a Skims thing in there. I don't know if they spawn. They probably just like oh. provided stuff. She was at a bot mitzvah? Yeah. Oh. And it was pink? Yeah, for Violet. Shout out Violet. I hope you had a good oh, bat mitzvah. A bat mitzvah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Love that. Yeah, it was so random. I was like, oh my God, we just put that up. I was like, did she see it? <laughs> Does she have cameras in our house? I was like, she's copying us again. <laughs> there maybe, was... she, maybe she knows what your order or something. I don't know. Oh, she's tracking my <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> she did another one. Um, it was the I'm Kim Kardashian. Yes. Of course I have covers all over my house or whatever. I was like. The covers, yes. Me too. Okay, girl. <laughs> it was very trash Thank coded. You. Yeah, I every so. single First of that office store, that was another one of my hot topics too, though, because it was very like divisive too. Oh, right. People, yeah. I'm kind of going on the, at the end of the other people, the attack, because it's like, why? It's 2023. Why do we have a tanning bed in our yeah. house? You know what I mean? Again, maybe it hits a little close to home for me, but it's just like, tanning beds are literally so deadly and dangerous and so awful. Like, it's just known you'll like get skin cancer if you're in a tanning bed. Like, it's so. She tried to clap back and say, well, not clap back. She tried to respond and say that it was helps her psoriasis yeah, or something. Yeah, but then Does there it? was a study that said it doesn't really help that much with psoriasis. <laughs> she responded to Allure because Allure put out a headline um, saying, please, Kim Kardashian, don't try to normalize tanning beds. Obviously, because of, like the skin cancer risk. And she said, it really helps my psoriasis when it's bad. I don't use it too often. But, but you yeah, have one there in was your a office. study. There was a study that doesn't actually help that much. I have psoriasis and I don't use a tanning bed. So yeah, I don't think that's the thing. I think she just like said that to like cover because her because <laughs> Chloe had skin cancer, right? She had like on her oh she had face. a scare, yeah, yeah, she or had something. A, mm -hmm. I had some removed off my back years ago too. I had like a whole video put up about it and uh, then I never posted it. It was like ten years ago, and it's just because I was I was the number one tanner. I was on a, a strange addiction where I'm like, I'm just going to die hot, like F cancer, who cares? Such a stupid person. And so I think when you see that, it's like one of those things, you have so much influence and it is one of those things that you do get a little upset about because you're just like, oh, we're trying so hard to get rid of it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, it's so outdated, but I, mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's not that serious, but I mean, it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> she kills people, so. <laughs> but I guess like, you know, Kim Kardashian, but I, when I saw that, I was like, Because mm. the whole trend is supposed to kind of show like relatability, you know, but I guess mm -hmm. that's not really Kim's brand but a lot of people were like okay like how much can you still like flaunt your wealth because i think like flaunting your wealth is kind of like out you know Definitely. like even everyone like at the emmys and all these award shows yep. I think like Ao Adebri was like she like won best supporting actress whatever she's like honestly like I just I still rent my house like and I love that I never dreamed of this like I just dreamed of having dental insurance you know Aww. like she was very like wow that's bougie I don't have dental insurance <laughs> I don't go to the dentist that often I guess maybe I should <laughs> we were just talking about that we're like maybe this year we need to go to the dentist so. <laughs> it's been like ten years I need to go <laughs> scared of it but I normalize renting too I always tell people yeah. I'm owning a house like we have leaks and stuff it's just like always something we had to get our water heater fixed and we had to get our heater fixed and now there's like leaks and then we have to get tiles on our floor it's just like never ending costs yeah normalize renting i mean i guess that's again that's her whole brand is like being unrelatable but she also kind of went through that too with like for her christmas decorations when she freaking had all those trees <laughs> in and then had her the whole block was covered in the fake snow oh it's my like God. And she kind of got like backlash for that too. And now she's here, like, I have a scan of my brain and my private jet and my tanning yeah. beds and every skin product I've had. And it's like, girl, t again, time and place. Like, I don't time really know. and place. Yeah, it just makes them. Like, I guess on one hand, I started watching them because I do love that on the show. Like, I'm like, wow. But it does get like, an, I don't know. Like I said, time and place. I think now we're in this thing where we're just like, okay, the economy, everyone's just like a little bit. Everything's yeah. up inflation and the work is down and everything. It's just like, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's kind of yeah. off-putting. And I've seen, there's this other girl on TikTok too. And she's like, she's married to this model, like Lucky Blue Smith. And they like. <laughs> Good name. I know. <laughs> but she posted this TikTok where she's like, um, he like took her to the mall and was like, we went to Williams Sonoma and I just had to buy like a knife and like oh. <laughs> then we went to Bottega and then I was on the fence. So we went to Louis Vuitton, but mm. then I went actually went with the Bottega. But actually, Lucky was like, "No, you should get both bags." And then and this is a TikTok. Yes, and it's like it's so like kind of like out of touch that it's like yeah. And then she's like, "Oh, and then my kids wanted a peanut butter and jelly, so she made the peanut butter from scratch. She made the jelly from scratch. Oh, she made the bread okay. from scratch." Well, cute i guess it's, i guess but then it's like it's so it's like so like out of touch and like unrealistic that it's like i feel like we're in the age now of like 
just wanting like realness the, yes. the realness you know De- i think that's why i do love the tiktokers there was one that got a lot of heat did you see the mom that fed her kid yeah. the powdered sugar donuts and applesauce and like everyone came this for her so mad. Yeah. and they're like oh my god how could you but then like so many other women were stitching it and like i'm giving them pop tarts i mean i eat pop tarts in the morning you know like i eat whatever like donuts donuts were a breakfast food when i was same. growing up like Literally we same. Would, yeah even here like we haven't had donuts in a while but my mom will bring donuts over for breakfast and i'm i don't know to me i'm like that's kind of bright i get it like with kids or whatever but also like kids it's like we were talking about this too with like at the beginning like for the first six months they literally just grow so quickly with just like formula you know which is like Mm -hmm. crazy so it's like kids i don't know i get a lot of hate too with my like pregnancy if i show what i eat it's like oh my god no vegetables for your kids and stuff it's like take i take i do eat vegetables but there's like prenatals whatever i try and eat better but people are so judgy and then with like kids when they're young i mean it's also kind of classes because like not everyone can afford to be a stay-at-home mom that cooks like the fancy yeah I don't even do that the little ones the plates and stuff like that where they have like they cut up the stars and like little fruits and stuff i'm like god people are so judgy and it's like i'm sure they're not eating donuts all day yeah you know yeah it's like uh obviously it's all about like balance and stuff but there's some days like if you're especially if you're working you just don't have time to you know make yeah. a whole little meal it's like let's give them something a lunchable you yeah. know what i mean it's like whatever think, we can do some days I think you gotta get through fine. most yeah. kids are fine growing up on that stuff and most kids don't have like gourmet like breakfasts and stuff like that they have bagel i mean we literally had bagels and donuts all the time growing mm-hmm. up People are just so judgy. Oh my god! It's like, what do they need? I don't know. I, that's why I don't show anything like we feed her or something like that because it's like everyone has yeah. a comment for every. Even if you feed them like vegetables or something with like a spice on there or something like, they'll just judge you. It's just like, well, that's not enough, or they shouldn't be eating that or what. I'm just like, I can't. Mel, but we should. I'll put it in the group chat. She actually was eating a whole thing of broccoli. We were at dinner. We got her mac and cheese, this like chicken katsuya or whatever. It's like this fried chicken. There was rice in front of her, and then these giant broccolis. I look over. She's eating this giant broccoli, just gnawing at it, <laughs> eating the back end of it. Eating the top. I was like, I took a video. I was like, who is this person? Is this my daughter? That was. She has the best diet. I mean, she eats. She loves like avocado. Oh my god! Fruit. She yeah. eats half avocado a day. She loves fruit, chicken, and I mean, she just loves fruit. But then, you know, if we make pasta for ourselves, the sauce is very messy. So yeah. we just give her a noodle. People are like, oh my god, you just feed her noodles, nothing else. Oh. I'm like, no, that's just the photo we shared. But you obviously don't see all of her meals yeah. all day. Oh. No, and I mean, on that and note, she eats a lot. when, when you eats... make your bolognese, not to say that again, but when you do make your bolognese, she used to only eat the plain pasta, but now she only wants the chunky meat out of it. Yeah, so, so now I'm like, I feed her just the sauce with the meat. That's all she wants oh is the God. sauce with the meat. I would show her eating, but if you don't show some meat eating, then you're like, oh my gosh, like you're showing your daughter eating. That's like a fetish where people are so I'm just like, oh my God, God. like people are. So it's just like you can't win. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. It's like whatever, but... With Parenthood, you can't win ever. Yeah. No, don't this is, show. And this is old. This is like from the Facebook days, like because there used to be so yeah. many like mom groups on Facebook, and people would just shame each other, yeah. left and right. Oh. Doesn't matter what you do. Everyone shames everyone. It's actually like so crazy the whole parenting thing. So it's like just don't even show. That's why they say in general, like it's like the random man from Atlanta. It's like just don't share that information that he was like then people want to judge you or it's kind of like the kian and his girlfriend oh yeah she keeps popping up with my thing for stuff you know she's like would a bad dad have a parenting book <laughs> and then everyone's like just because you have like people and i feel for them like i do like i know she's trying to like show that they're good parents and stuff like that but you just can't win girl like you can't show that you're a good parent and if you do then it looks like you're oh they only have a minute you only film with a minute and then don't see them anymore it's just like you just can't win so i'm like sometimes when i see people just trying so hard to defend themselves or their parenting i'm like just don't try mm-hmm. but we're talking we're, oh, we're talking about oh skims lana oh. <laughs> i would love to do skims campaign so you can hit me up kim i actually like i love them but you know because the lana campaign i went down the skims rabbit hole and then i never got the men's stuff but i really wanted to try it but the prices are a little wild over there too and the yeah. wait list the whole wait list thing i'm like she wrapped all her gifts in the skims fabric so the fabric <laughs> is there like y'all have the fabric why is there a wait list like I know. why it, are we gatekeeping the product you i know? think that's just like a tactic it's like when we went to Very our lobster and nobody was in there yeah <laughs> they literally had us wait what 30 minutes and there was and i get it like this they, they, a lot of people say there's not enough servers but there actually was there was like six servers and maybe six tables and mm. i was like this is odd um and there was a even a photographer was going around there was like a photographer taking pictures of people wow. at red lobster and there was only like six tables in there but we waited 30 minutes and then we waited like another 30 minutes for food and i was just like hmm, i wonder why they have you wait maybe to make you feel special you made it through you know there was so much demand yeah. that's how kylie did so well with the lip kits right it was like mm-hmm. there was it kept selling out so fast that that's how it got big but it's like you know you have the fabric just make a freaking t-shirt <laughs> like how hard I is know, it i know i agree I with know. you it's like Coachella too. I guess there was like a wait list for Coachella tickets. Oh Did yeah. You get yours? No, I am not a Coachella girl. At Me neither. All. Did you ever go? Never, ever, ever. Never I've once. never had an interest. No. In high school, like my friends all would go. 
and it was like the group the friend group like trip or whatever but i couldn't it yeah. all sounded it's like you're dusty mm -hmm. you're walking a lot water's yeah. like 10 bucks so you're hot you're standing like a crowds. mile away from the stage. Yeah. Humongous crowds. You can't escape people. Yeah. It sounds my like my nightmare too. <laughs> I've gone to like a party one year. I went down and I was like, this is awful. I like left. I don't blame yeah. you. It just sounds like not. I wanted to be in with everybody and like, you know, look yeah. cool. And <laughs> Have I like a lost photo. a bunch of my Yeah. You know, and I was like, okay, let me show that I'm in the mix. But it was awful. And I the festivals too, it just doesn't sound like anything I'd want to do. Yeah, the lineup this year, I mean, it has some girlies, like Renee is on it, Sabrina Carpenter uh -oh. is on it, Ice Spice. Okay. So the girlies... Bibi Rexa. BB, yeah, the girlies are there, but even for the girlies, I think even if Taylor Swift was at Coachella, I couldn't. Olivia Rodrigo, I couldn't. Really? That's how much I don't like Coachella. All that, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Who's like the headliners, No Doubt or something? Yeah, like mm -hmm. No Doubt is like this special headliner or whatever. Random. But yeah. Can't do it. But I love when Coachella happens because everyone from LA it's is gone. gone. Yeah. Yes. And it's real. It's like it's so really real. so empty. I'm like, wow, this yes, is great. Yeah, so you can go to the mall and no one is there. I've always it's said perfect. that. Yeah. It's better even than the Super Bowl. Because like Super Bowl two, you go out, no one's out, but the Coachella is yes, even bigger. It's amazing in yeah. LA. No Are you traffic. Going to the Super Bowl? No, I'm not going to do You that. went for ET. I feel like you should go. They are going. I'm not going. I have no interest in going. That's another one. The crowd. It's like, it's mm -mm. too much, too much, it's too much. It's in Vegas and for this what? year. Yeah. Usher, Reba, and Post Malone. It's, oh, yeah. I forgot that Reba's <laughs> doing the national anthem. Like, that's wild. Yeah. Weird. We have to have cute football outfits. So I have a pink football oh. jersey that I found. From what? From my pink era when I did everything pink. Oh, well, that's the thing. As I was planning the Mondays out, I was like, that's why I was asking because I was like, okay, I'm trying to plan out my outfits and stuff like that. But there's too many holidays all at once in February because, like, mm -hmm. The Chinese New Year is February 10th, which is right before the Super Bowl, which is February 11th. But that's the week of Valentine's Day. So I wanted to wear a cute Valentine's outfit. <laughs> you have to combine them all. <laughs> I know. Because I, I have a cute – Versace just came out with the Year of the Dragon stuff. And they had a cute pink sweater that was a pink dragon. And I was like, yes, and I'm a dragon. And Elvis is going to be a dragon. So I'm like, I'm going to get all the dragon stuff. And I'm like, ooh, we're going to do a whole – we even bought, like, dragon stuff for this. But I'm like, that's literally the week of Valentine's Day. But if we do it the week before – then it's like the Super Bowl. So I was just like, when do we put the dragon in there? And when do we celebrate this? Maybe we have to have a special like Chinese New Year. Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, many outfit Valentine's. change. Maybe we do like a pause okay. midway and then outfit change. So where did you get your pink jersey? Amazon, like years ago. Just to be Just to be cute. cute. Yeah. I think okay. I took a pink Super Bowl photo. I don't get too much into the Super Bowl. I like, don't at but, all ever. But, but I, theme, do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cute and then theme. Coachella, we have to have a Coachella outfit just for oh, like. God, the hippie era is just not my vibe. No, I don't think that's the Coachella vibe anymore. Oh, I, think, I thought it was. I thought I everyone dresses like hippie vibes. I don't think anymore. What is it? I think it's just slay now. I guess like <laughs> I, it, everyone kind of looks like a drag queen kind of at Coachella. I think. Okay, well, or maybe I'm, I'm just thinking of um, you know, <laughs> drag James queens Charles. at Coachella. No, <laughs> oh, James Charles. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm down. I'm always down for a good theme, but I'm gonna be like nine months pregnant then by the time oh, Coachella that's true, yeah. just have a big old belly. Or Met Gala. I was that was another one I was thinking. I was like, oh, like Elvis could either be here or about to be here. That's probably. true. Well, we'll probably I'll probably know around that time when Elvis is coming. Well, I think I think that'll be like my last week, that first week of May. Well, not last week, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. It's gonna be wild. I'm down for a Met look because what is it? It's the, the sleepy vibes, yeah. the sleeping beauty. I'll be Princess Aurora. And I'm going to be the sleepy, the sleepy tea bear. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's cute. Okay. I'm down for it. That'll be really cute. Okay. I'm so down for that. Anyways, there's so much coming up in February and, I, and Valentine's Day is my favorite because I just love the aesthetic of it. So. Oh, yeah. Are you doing anything for Valentine's Day? Oh, I probably should. Uh, really? I haven't Not even thought. Not the day. No, maybe like the weekend before the weekend after. Well, the weekend before is the Super Bowl. So that'd be a good well, weekend be to, a do good time to do it. Because yeah. Because everyone's going to be. Focus on the Super Bowl. I don't like to go out on Valentine's Day. Oh, no. no. All holidays I don't like to go on because it's too much, like, commo New Year's. I never go on. Never. Too much commotion. Too yeah. many people out. Like, it's just no. 4th of July. No. <laughs> Who does 4th of July anymore? People love a little fireworks show, like, mm. going out for, like, a 4th of July party. I'm like, uh No, I think the holidays in the summer are just, like, pointless. Like, there's yeah. just no point to them. Mm -hmm. Especially 4th of July. Like, we're not really supposed to be celebrating our independence, right? I guess. A little problematic, maybe. I don't know. I think very problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I think 4th of July is canceled. I never post about 4th of July because I'm like, I think that's canceled. <laughs> uh, I'm down for a Skims campaign for sure. Um, this is a random one, but I just have to, to point it out because it's so funny. <laughs> you with Sugar and Spice forgetting what Matt Rife was canceled for took me out. <laughs> when I was editing that, I had like literally pause. I was just, what is Matt Rife canceled for? What did he do? What am I? As if we didn't have like four episodes. I of know. <laughs> take me a minute for real. I was like, isn't that crazy? I mean, uh, luckily they were also with me because they're not even pregnant or old. And I was just like, how are you forgetting? I think they're just 
in their own little world, so they don't really keep up with the Matt Rifle uh, at all. But yeah, for me, I was, I literally was like, what did he, and I was like, oh. What was his main cancellation? Was the domestic violence joke. That, and then the clap back with the helmets, and then also just being an ass. Right, like, it was just like yeah. a series of events. Yes, a series of very unfortunate douchey events. I do really forget. I forget so easily. I was just like... <laughs> I know, and then they didn't know either, and I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> that was a lot. That was the chaotic interview, and I love them, but people know. They're like, Trisha, like, two guests are a lot, but then when it's sugar and spice. Yes, that interview took me out. Even editing, oh so I had to take a few breaks. <laughs> I was like, whew. <laughs> I was like that, too. I was so tired, especially being pregnant after that interview. I get tired, and I was just like so – because I'm so in it, but then afterwards, I'm just like – all your energy is just in. And they yeah. were taking content down here for like a couple hours after. I'm like, how do you have the energy? I'm like, I'm just going to go up and <laughs> sleep because just let yourselves out, whatever, because I was so tired. But they really are full. Even when I've done uh, clubs with them in the past, it's like 12 hour days. Like they just like love to go, go, go. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah I'm so tired. They were great. We have good ones up coming up this week too. One of our producers, London and Ness, wanted to know about our nominations and predictions for the Grammys. Um, oh, like who would win? Mm -hmm. Um, I think someone random is going to win. I think I want Livy Rodrigo to win some, a couple. I want, I think I want Billie Eilish to win again. I think she's up for a song for mm. visual media. For what? Um, for Barbie, the, what was I made for? Is Ryan Gosling nominated? I, yes, he is nominated for a Grammy. I'm pretty sure. That's and, wild. And Dua Lipa, wins? too. I think for, it's Oh, for, for Mermaid, for the Mermaid Barbie? Yeah. I like that song. Is a damn. I think SZA is going to be the main winner, though. That's my probably my big prediction. Everyone's been talking about SZA lately. I don't even know one song. Uh, I just killed my ex. Oh yeah. And then she had the SNL song. I need a big boy. I need a oh, big okay. boy. I, I know love these that from song. TikTok. Yeah. She's like a TikTok. Famous. Yeah, she probably TikTok sounds. Okay. Um, I think SZA is going to be like probably the big Grammys winner. That's probably my biggest. Interesting. Prediction. And then my other prediction, I think maybe Travis Kelsey will go to the Grammys with Taylor Swift, but mm. maybe she doesn't win. And then Olivia Rodrigo will win one or two. Billy will win one. What about Madison Beer? Is she nominated? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she crazy, is. Crazy, right? Yeah. Um, I want her to – that would be amazing That'd if she be won. That would be crazy if she won. That would be so awesome. Yeah. I would love that for her. Same. I actually really like the last um, – like the songs that she did recently. I actually loved like all her little mm – -hmm. she did like drop list, but then she had a couple albums and EPs, and I've loved like everything she's yeah, done. Yeah, I love and her too. Interesting. People have been talking about SZA. Everyone I meet lately is like, SZA, SZA, SZA. I'm like, what is – I need to get on it. I, I feel like I'm always so behind a little bit with all the I it think people. I like her. Did you see uh, – speaking of Taylor Swift, uh, what do you feel about the what was it bad blood quesadillas or something or karma quesadillas oh my god the and food bad at the football waffles. game <laughs> so lame why is everyone so mad about it i think that's cute it's just you, there's so much room for like cute taylor swift food items and it's just like you can't just name a food and then name a song <laughs> like let's put some charisma was, unique, uniqueness into yeah, it you know like the bad blood of waffles i'm like well that's like your know. period or something like that it's so <laughs> gross like what's that for and do they she get a percentage of the food sales i think they just made it up for the game because now the football games, I'm so excited for football season to be over because it's like half the people are excited and half the people are just like burning photos of Taylor Swift dramatically. I'm like, straight men need to calm down. Straight men are so like emotional. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> Before the game, they there was all these guys of the opposite team, the Bills. I know way too much. <laughs> they were like in the parking lot at the – what are those called? The – like tailgating, tailgating yeah. they're burning photos of Taylor. Like, we don't care about oh Taylor. God. And then – they're like all crying when the team loses or whatever. I'm like, you guys are insane. Yeah, they're so weird. So they're still in it. The Chiefs are still in it. Right. Yeah, I I'm think. surprised you haven't gone to a Chiefs game. I know. You're not just even not Taylor about it? Got, I'm not gypsy. The, the Chiefs. <laughs> she Taylor didn't make can't it. get me to the Chiefs. She did not game. make it. <laughs> People are turning on her too, Gypsy. I know. Did you see the fake view between Gypsy Rose and Natalie Nunn? Yes. Oh, our patron wanted to know about that. Let that me get the patron name. That is a wild name. story. Yeah. That was asked by Alex, our producer. He wanted to know about the Gypsy. Well, I had it written down as a hot topic and then it was like, fake so i was like all right i take that off or whatever like that. i think it's yeah. funnier that it's fake i think it's like, <laughs> like who because pretended to be them <laughs> i know it's so bizarre so the whole thing was like there was these fake screenshots of a fake gypsy rose messaging a fake natalie nunn back and forth about <laughs> um gypsy hosting the baddies reunion which what is, is like, baddies it's like a zeus tv show <laughs> a zeus network natalie nunn's from the bad girls club so i'm assuming it's a lot of like it's a reality show where they're just baddies i'm assuming <laughs> But, There's one called Fatties and I've 
<laughs> sorry, I always just think daddy's a man. I gotta stop talking. Okay, sorry. Oh, that's funny. Uh, but it was this whole like fake exchange, and then it went viral. And then Gypsy had reached out to Natalie Nunn saying, "Natalie, you were messaging a fake Gypsy Rose. I just wanted you to know." And then Natalie Nunn responded, "Gypsy, that was a fake Natalie Nunn talking to a fake Gypsy Rose." But it had to stem from some truth somewhere because was it Gypsy? Did Gypsy actually post like, "Oh, they asked me to host this"? Was that real on the Facebook? I don't think so. The whole thing seemed fake. I think so. No it, one asked Gypsy Rose. To I don't think so. I think it was just you. I mean, you know how it is, especially with the little like the me- viral like TikTok memes right, or whatever. People right. just make something up for <laughs> to be unserious and silly. That's so funny. And it was funny. I was like, wow, that's funny. But then in the real conversation, I love it. Gyp- when Gypsy was talking to Natalie, she's like, "Girl, um, there are so many fake pages. You have you can't trust anyone on social media, girl." As if Gypsy didn't come out of prison two weeks ago. Gypsy knows she's on it. She's like an influencer. <laughs> like she knows all the all the social media. She it, has the ins and outs down. I was like, like, oh my God. The exchange sounded so real though. Like Gypsy was like, I don't care. This is my platform. I'm going to do it. I'm like, that sounds so real. But people turn so quickly. That's what they always say is like, you know, you bring someone up and they just tear them down like so fast. And mm-hmm. it's like, why are people mad? Because she's like taking advantage of being an influencer or what? I guess so. I guess so. Like, it That's does, crazy. It's, I mean, that literally happens with anyone who gets like a lot of viral fame. You know, it's yeah. like someone can't be happening for so long before they it turns. And then all of a sudden, what people liked about you becomes annoying. You know? Right. So, yeah. Because people love that she was like doing social media stuff and was kind of like out of touch. And she was posting keep uh, keep calm and carry on memes to her Instagram oh, and love, stuff. Love, it's love. very 2012, you know? <laughs> like, keep calm and carry on. Like, Those are my favorite. Yeah, she's so like kind of very Trish coded, like a decade behind on the times, you know? Uh, and I loved it. it. I thought it was sweet. And but she's, now, but they were just like, it's too much yeah, with the documentary. And... It, yeah, people are like kind of over it now. But it sounds like, I feel like Gypsy's even like, her coverage, like her promo tour has kind of slowed down. So it's, I feel like it's chilling out now. I think maybe even she knows to yeah. have it die down a little bit. Probably do a podcast some, or something. I would love a mm-hmm. Gypsy Rose podcast. And I, I get it. I get why people are against it. But I, I don't know. I still. Like what would it look like? Would she be interviewing people or. Because I'm going to say this idea and then watch her do it. And then <laughs> it's whatever. But I could, I would love to see her like catch up on life. Like interview all these people and like get caught up on like the time that she missed you know like the people who killed people while she was in prison oh i'm thinking like pop culture stuff Uh (laughs) wait what was he probably kept about pop culture in prison prison, but it's like different to actually experience it you know because you kind of kept up but then like you didn't yeah you when you get the details of the story like oh wow so much happened the context of these big pop culture events you know wait what years or just in general she was in prison (laughs) Oh, if it said me, you kind of kept up. Oh, like you, like you didn't know Taylor Swift was canceled, for example. Oh, you know, I see like what you said. yeah, totally. Yes, that is definitely my life. I'm like, I like hear things, and but I'm you just don't like, get the full. Oh yeah, Taylor Swift being canceled is shocking. I mean, it was shocking. So many things. When Colleen said she was canceled, like you're canceled. What for what? You see, you, know so what many, I mean? you yeah. see like a headline, or you kind of know of something, yeah. but you don't know the ins and outs. So I would love for Gypsy to kind of go through that like journey of like discovering what really happened. Oh my God, you, you know? should co-host with her. <laughs> you should co-host with her. I would be down. <laughs> I I I'd want the interview to happen very badly. Yeah, I'm down. I'm still down to interview. I like her. Um, she said she was trying to come to LA. I saw somewhere she said she was trying to make it out to make LA. It happen. Yeah, I'll call you out, Gypsy. Let's make it happen. Yeah, I would love to. Oh my god, that'd be that'd be great. I'm not over you. I'm not over the Gypsy Rose. There's all these memes anyway. again now of like of her and her uh, boyfriend or husband. Sorry, Ryan. And it's like I know Ariana wants this man so bad. Like keep Ariana <laughs> yeah. away. And like keep an eye out, Gypsy. Keep Ariana away. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone wants – oh, we talked about that with the director. The older lady to the director, they want her to go after oh, that man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson. But I think Ariana, I think the predictions was that she was going to have a baby this year and they were going to have a kid. Really? Yeah, I heard that. Well, was this fake? It might have been fake because, you know, me, I fall for everything on Twitter that – the wife came out and said that it wasn't – she didn't say anything. She never gave a statement. This It's very mixed because with the Ethan Slater Ariana thing – okay, so – the wife had allegedly talked to Daily Mail and had these like exact quotes, but then there was kind of like a cleanup. TMZ had posted these statements from like Ethan's camp, and this was back when it was fresh. That saying that um, his wife, uh, ex-wife, never said that stuff to Daily Mail. She doesn't know where it happened. But then TMZ asked that they if uh, the ex-wife would put out a, a joint statement with Ethan saying that they're co-parenting, whatever, and she wouldn't, which is kind of suspicious. Mm. And then. Um, TMZ had said the uh, ex-wife didn't know that what off the record meant when she was talking to the Daily Mail. So it's all very murky and it seemed like all the points that TMZ had were so like clearly from like Ethan Slater's like people because it made him look good, you know? Right. Because if it was really wasn't real, like if the quotes were just made up, which is like very illegal, well, journalism. Yeah. 
you would think that she would release a statement saying that I never said that, but that statement doesn't exist. Oh, because I saw something today that was like, and it had like a page six link. I didn't click it. And then it's like, she released a statement saying like, I never said that. Like we were separated months before. Oh, I, but that's not real. I don't know. I didn't see it that. It didn't look too real, but it, then there was like a link and I was like, I don't know. I didn't click on the link. Cause I thought maybe it'd be spam or something. And There's I get like a virus. There's some stuff that you've talked about. And <laughs> that one and Twitter slash X is hard. Cause a lot of the people just get the verified mark and yes. you fall for a lot of like, there's a, a big uh, pop crave called poo, poo crave, crave all the time. You all- <laughs> Which one did I do all the time? I always think it's so real. And I was like, Oh my God, that looks so real. Which one was it? It was a few months. It was like a month or two ago. I forgot which one it was because you oh. specifically said like this headline and it was from Pooh Crave. I know. Um, I always get I always get I think I screenshot something even this morning and I thought it was real. And I was like, is this Pooh Crave or Pop Crave? I kind of want to know. I'm just going to make sure because then that like really changes things. Yeah. The main things that people said is just like page six retracted whatever they said. That's the main thing. I've saw in our, No, in our comments, that's what most people were trying to say. But but I know that page six is the only place that those things were said. The Arianators definitely were like, I'm unfollowing after that last episode. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know what we said. Uh, nothing even that bad. I still, like, I like Ariana. I like the song. But what she did with, like, the whole thing with, like, Aiden Slater's ex, I feel like that's messed up. Problematic faves, again. Yeah. Like, even with Taylor, like, there's problematic. I love her, obviously. But there's stuff that is problematic with her. I think she should stop flying the jet so much. I don't think that's, like, a hot oh, take, you that's know? That's a hot take. Why? It's global warming. <laughs> like, she's uh... contributing so much CO2. I love her. I still think that she should... Maybe not use the jet so much. I love Ariana. I think maybe with married men and stuff or people in relationships, don't go full force. You know, like that's it. But I, I still love. I still love. I still buy the music. I still stream. Everybody's a little problematic. Yeah, I no one think, is perfect. Who's the perfect in your eyes? Honestly, I don't know. I like Jacob Lordy. No. Oh, what's problematic about him? Well, again, I heard stuff about him and Joey King. So, I, oh. and granted, it could maybe not be true, but still, is like, that? Schneider's daughter. I don't know. Someone said that. Someone's really? like Joey King because she just performed at Dolly and like forgot the words or she was drunk or something and everyone's like that's Rob Schneider's daughter and I was like what? No, that's L L King. L King. Who did you say? Joey King. Oh, don't know either one. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know what either one looks like. <laughs> Joey King was from the Kissing Booth. Who's she's a little? She's like small. Like she's like five two, brown hair. L King is blonde. She's saying a. Uh, I don't know. She, I forget what song she sang. She's a more. She's a vocalist. She's a singer. Oh, which one's related to Rob Schneider? L King, this blonde. Sure. Uh, no. She's tall. I don't know her Rob height. Schneider's but... tall, daughter tall. That's crazy. I just know Joey King because the height difference between Jacob Lordy and Joey King when they were dating was like a foot over a foot. It yeah, was he's, crazy. He's very tall. Yeah. The, even in the Elvis movie, he's like a little off putting. That's my like. I mean, can't help it. I mean, tall is great in real life. It's just like legs off. Or yeah, something. yeah. <laughs> he is very tall. Yeah. Mm. But anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I like that he's with Olivia Jade. Good for her. She really came out of her scandal. She's like, I know. Who cares? So she's like, I am dating Jacob Lordy. How the hell does she do it? Pretty girl. Pretty girl pretty syndrome. Privilege. You just gotta yeah. be pretty. You're pretty privileged. Mm -hmm. You're forgiven for so much more when you're pretty. I know. And I guess technically it wasn't her scandal, really. I guess it was more her mom. That's true. Yeah, you can't really blame her as a child. Yeah. But damn, she really won. (laughs) (laughs) She did win. She got Jacob (laughs) Elordi. Did you see the Lizzie McGuire plot got released for the reboot? I did. Is this a hot topic? Because I love to talk about this, but I didn't see anyone talking about it. (laughs) Oh, I saw a lot of people talking about it. Yeah. I would love to be in this discourse. Discourse? (laughs) Yeah. Discord? Discourse. Okay. I love to be in the discourse. (laughs) Okay, so big Lizzie McGuire fan here. Yeah, and a writer Love. came out that worked on the f- reboot that never got picked up by Disney Plus, um, and revealed like what the plot would be. And it yeah. sounds like a, it would have been a good show. Oh, and I'm actually it was upset. So good, especially for like us old millennials. Like we would <laughs> we love it. <laughs> yeah. We would love it. Lizzie, I think it was in one of the episodes. Wakes up in Ethan Sl- uh, Ethan Slater, <laughs> Ethan Kraft's bed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I and then. What was it? The little cartoon said something like she, the little cartoon had like a checklist of things that she wanted to do. Oh, Ethan yeah. uh, craft was at the top of her list. She's like check and check again, or yeah. something like check twice. I was like, oh. And she would have caught her fiance cheating on her, Ooh. Um, which led to the Ethan craft thing, and, and then and Gordo, she was gonna confess her love to her or something, and then he was he's engaged with like a baby on the yeah, way or something. So she just let it be. Those are the real life things that yeah. we want to know from Liz McGuire. You know what I mean? And she looked cool, like her green outfit that they had yeah. her in. And what was she like? A she was like a fashion designer or something. Yeah, so and then cool. she was gonna meet a gay guy and become his roommate. Oh, who was yeah. the gay guy? The character's name is Carson. Um, Carson was- Kessling. <laughs> Is he playing her best friend? He was in a movie with Hilary Duff. He was in the one with uh, Heather Locklear. The Perfect Man. The Perfect Man. He was like, I need to. That was so good, too. (laughs) 
<laughs> I could see Carson Cressley being her best friend in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know. That seems crazy. They would move in together, live in LA. I don't think Carson Cressley it would work. But <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Also, it was going to be LA based. To me, it's not in New York. I think that's where it originally. But then they were, she was going to move to mm, California, where she's to from, to start over. Yeah, ooh, yeah. that would have been so good. And then her brother was going to discover that she was uh, had a tracker on her phone by like her toxic ex. Like it was a whole like. Oh wow! So it's very updated. Yeah, and I'm actually so upset that it never took off, especially because Wiz- Wizards of Waverly Place is getting like this reboot now on Disney Channel. With who in it? Not Selena Gomez. She's Selena Gomez is producing it and is going to guest star, but it's the older brother, David Henry, is like the oh, main okay, star and good. he has kids and stuff. But I'm like kind of over the reboot and I'm like, this doesn't, especially if Selena's not the lead, like I don't really care about it. No yeah. offense. I, some people, fans are really excited. I'm not excited, to be honest. No, I think if you don't have the original lead, like if Hillary Duff isn't Lizzie McGuire, yeah. if, if Selena Gomez is not in it, like what's the point of yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that either. But, but no, they I, had the original Gordo. Yeah, they, everyone was back. Was it the original Ethan? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I love everyone that. everyone was back. Gordo was back. The uh, parents, Matt, the brother was back. Oh, wow. Um, and they filmed, they only filmed two episodes and then D- Disney didn't pick it up, which is so annoying. Because of who? Because like Hillary Duff said there was creative differences. Who yeah. was it creative differences with? Disney wanted it PG, but they wanted it to go more PG-13. And Hillary was like, well, I don't want to dumb it down. Like, I don't want to water. The only way I'm going to do Lisa McGuire is if I can update her and make her like a 30-year-old yeah. woman going through mm-hmm. 30-year-old things. And they didn't want her to to go that direction because Disney Plus now that everyone knows what happened in Lizzie McGuire like now's the time to right the wrongs like right. this is my whole platform I'm like honestly Hillary Duff if we have the crowd funded uh, I if, yes. this, is we'll the <laughs> this is the one Kickstarter this is the one screw all the useless well, Kickstarters yes, we'll with contribute. shit that's gonna be bad this yes. would slay and if we have to crowdfund Lizzie McGuire the reboot oh. like let's freaking do it how much do you think it would be it can't be that much right no right? you can pay all those people i'm sure hillary duff alone is like a million dollars i feel like but i feel like hillary duff would do it for the passion like if she knows that we raise this money i think she would do it for the passion <laughs> i think she probably got a good paycheck She's like, i'm gonna do it for 20 million again okay <laughs> how much do we have to raise oh, hillary man. duff give us a number and we'll freaking love, start it god oh man that would have been so great i know i'm actually heartbroken that it didn't disney happen disney plus really needs to get it together because all their stuff is like not pg on there they have home improvement on there yeah, and that's like have, not pg right? Right? They have some yeah. stuff that's older. I guess maybe the idea of like an IP that was like for children being older, but we all grew up. You know what I mean? We're grown now. Well, I mean, there are kids on there, I'm sure. But I mean, like people who watch Lizzie McGuire, oh, like we were yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. but we're older now. You yeah. Know? And I feel like the Disney Plus app is like very like the parents run anyways. Yeah. Like my daughter's not just on there scrolling. It's like we got to make it work. We got to write the wrongs. Oh, I don't man. know how. That's my whole campaign now like my whole platform i would is... love to see that happen i saw that it was like leaked i was so excited about it i was like oh yes, i know it's so good the wizards of Wa- waverly place be- reboot being announced at the same time of finding out about the lizzie mcguire plot just really made me extra sad wizards is just like not good though right it, for the time it was cute like i never really got into I, it i thought selena gomez was really funny in it like she was mm. a very good like comedic actress for the time you know i appreciated it at the time i, I don't really go back to it yeah you know so someone said selena gomez's boyfriend was kicked out of the red carpet for I mean, they thought he was homeless yeah I, is I that mean, real the, the homeless thing is kind of a stretch but it's kind of funny so i'm gonna kind of go with it i guess what did he actually get kicked out no he was on the red carpet <laughs> and then uh he was kind of like behind selena and then Selena went to walk the red carpet and then security looked at him and made him go like all the way around. So he had to like exit and go. Oh. To a, I guess. Why didn't he walk it with her? Um, Cause like you can walk it and be like, you can have a solo shot, but then you're a couple shot too. I know. It's weird. Especially cause she's so public with him. I don't know why she That's actually so weird. really she, don't like, know. She like is obsessed with him. And so like, about him all the time. Yeah. And he was there like in the audience with her. Yeah, so, that's weird. I don't know. I don't I'd know bring why. Moses with me on the red carpet. I actually wouldn't want him to go around. Like, I'm just going to go by myself on the red that's carpet. That's worse, right? Yeah. yeah. I think so at least, even if they're just standing there, because you see the in between people that are in between, like, trying not to get in the shot. I mean, there's people that can stand there in between and then yeah. go in for a picture or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't maybe, know. Maybe she had a brand deal or something. Like, she needed to take those photos for some purpose. Well, she did photos, like, by herself. And then she did group ones with Martin Short and Steve oh. Martin. And he, it's not like he's a nobody. Like, he's, I mean, also, I said. <laughs> after like the Brooke episode people were like no Oscar Benny Blanco has produced a lot of songs for a lot of pop girlies I get it I still don't like him but I get <laughs> oh it oh my gosh um, he did do a lot I think it was a lot of like Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber I think he, he did, did a Kesha, lot of songs he did like <laughs> oh okay yeah he's done like a ton he's done is, a lot of pop yeah. girlies yeah. but I mean okay I can like the song but right. he did you a little Addison Rae song <gasps> New um, ones? No, the that that first single. Was oh, that the one? one she performed on like Obsessed. You say you're obsessed with me. And I wait think a second. And I say me too. Oh, okay. You that know was that good. one? <laughs> I know. I mean kind of, but I don't know. That was good though. <laughs> 
I do love Addison Rae. I wish she would be back. I know. She, with the music. She's kind of another one who's so elusive because she, for her album or her EP, did no press. For Thanksgiving, did no press. It's very interesting. Very I wonder elusive. why. Like, Thanksgiving was weirdly no press. Like I know because I we reached out because I'm like, oh, Addison Rae's in it. Like, let's get an interview. But she was e. for the premiere. reached out and she said no? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weird. Even for the music, we reached out to do an interview for the music. Mm-mm. Wow, maybe she's trying to be like Barry Keoghan and be like. I was gonna say, yeah, she's in her elusive era, I guess. But I feel like she's the one that shouldn't be elusive because people like her for her. Yeah, you know. So I feel like she should do the interview. At I least here and her. there, you know. Come on, Justrish. That would be. I'm gagged for you, Addison Ray. I love you so much. I really do. I think about her a lot. She's my Roman Empire <laughs> at the moment. I'm always like, hmm, I wonder what Addison Ray is doing. Is she still with her boyfriend? Like, good question. You know, is she acting more? What's her next upcoming movie? Is she in those like recording studio? Like, what is she oh, up yes. to? Oh yes, I love when you would see pictures of Britney Spears coming out of the recording yeah. studio. You're like, oh, she's getting the new music. And for you us. know, like something's coming. You yeah. know, but with Addison, I don't know what is coming at all. She is elusive. We love the mystery. Yeah, we love the mystery of it all. She can't get canceled if she stays elusive. So I like that. <laughs> so we support. Maybe she. I think the new thing now is hiding pregnancies. Maybe she's trying to like hide something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if you should say I feel, that. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm just guessing, speculating, allegedly. I don't know. No, not even allegedly. I didn't hear it. I literally just made that up. But I feel like in general, it's very hip to be hiding pregnancies. Like Kelly, she just came out as pregnant. Yeah. Everyone is just. Suki Waterhouse waited a long time to announce yeah. hers. Wow, with Robert good Pattinson. for them. It's hard. I don't know how people wait. It's like want to like put it out there to the world. But I know. I get it. I think it's cute. I think it's a cute idea. That'd be crazy if you like. Addison Rae or Charlie D'Amelio was like pregnant or something. I mean, it's not like they're, they're young, you know, but they're not like, it's not like a teenage pregnancy yeah. or anything, but. Yeah, because Charlie's. 21? Oh, no, she's no? 19 or 20, oh, I think, Charlie. Don't get pregnant. <laughs> I mean, get pregnant if you want. I don't if know. You want, like, yeah. Hallie Bailey says she likes to be a young mom. You know, people do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, back in the day, people did get, like, people had babies in their early 20s, you yeah. know? It's like, I think now it's like. 30s is the new, but that was definitely never how it was. Did you see this thing with that resurfaced with Ian Summerholder and Nikki Reed? Because Nikki Reed joined TikTok and then all of a sudden these yes. old comments about Ian Summer Summerholder hiding her um what was it? Her uh oh my god, what is it? Why am I blanking on the word? Birth control pills. Wait, what? You didn't hear about that? I heard, oh. okay, I heard about it, but on TikTok he was hiding them? No, so um Nikki Reed just joined TikTok and she joined in like a by doing a little video with Ian Summerholder. And then all of a sudden, the girlies are like, no, Ian, we didn't forget. In 2017, they did this podcast together. Oh, it was it a- all ends with a podcast. <laughs> Don't go on podcasts. It's such if it's ours. God, yeah, it's such if it's ours and spill the tea. Oh, my God. But they went on this, like, parenting podcast. And the, and Ian was telling the story. It was like, yeah, like, we had talked about um, kids, but um, we hadn't started yet. But we were on vacation, and I hid her pregnancy, her birth control pills, so she couldn't take them. So we could... Uh, trying to have he a baby admitted he said this on the, on podcast? the podcast and he was oh. with nikki reed and they were like laughing about it trying to be like relatable but it was just <laughs> no. like weird it was just really really weird what was she saying to it she was laughing and going along with it and then they even had to release a joint statement afterwards again this was back in 2017 but they released a joint seven uh, joint statement afterwards being like it wasn't like he wasn't trying to take advantage of whatever like we had already had discussed having kids and i was going to get off of it anyway oh but it um, was real it wasn't like they're like we were joking yeah, sometimes it, i say stories that like are exaggerated i'm like i'm joking obviously yeah, like whatever the exact statement because i'm pretty sure that's what it was oh my and i wrote God. it down but again like that's a story that maybe you shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> or maybe if you say it, you're like, actually, can you leave that out? I like, get, you know, I get why they were like, I get it. Trying to be cute when you're like in a relationship or something. It's like, wait, was this about Nikki Reed? So how mm-hmm. long have they been together? For a long time, because oh yeah, because I always see comments about like his ex or something like that. Oh, Nina, but his ex was Nina Dobrev from The Vampire Diaries. Oh, and I think people because they're on that show together and played a couple in that show. They that, want them back together, or they're just like famous for being together. I, I still see comments about that girl, and I'm just like. This is so weird. I thought like, so. I thought they were like newly together. No, they're married and have been together for a long time. Because wasn't Nikki Reed with like Jay Moore or something like random? I think so. Yeah. So random. They said to anyone who has been affected by reproductive coercion, we are <laughs> deeply sorry. That is an extremely oh. serious issue in women's rights is something that is incredibly important to both of us. It is something we've been very vocal about and something that is very close to our hearts. So that was their statement oh. after they were getting um, in some hot water for saying that. But again, it's just something weird that you shouldn't admit to. Or do. <laughs> or do. Yeah, period. Actually. Yeah. That is crazy. I mean, it is a weird thing. That is that was weird. And how would she just not be like divorced? Like, you know what I mean? I like know. I, I guess you're in a relationship, so you get it's like all these women like Hallie Bailey, like they get it, or or who's the other one? Uh Simone Biles, like I guess they have an inner dialogue or yeah. something that and we maybe don't know about. And for them personally, if they had already like talked about having kids, I guess it wouldn't have seemed like so it's not like it was something like something that she said, I don't want kids, you yeah. know. 
they had agreed that they wanted them. So I guess that kind of helps, but it's just a very weird. <laughs> I think he's like trying to be like funny, like he's relatable. like relatable and yeah. like cute. It's like I wanted this so bad because it's usually like the girl that wants it more or something. Yeah. So I think maybe he was trying to be cute about it. Yeah, um, but it was not the case. But again, I, I also on the opposite, I feel bad because <laughs> stuff that happens a long time ago yeah. getting resurfaced. It's like. It kind of sucks because uh, I'm sure – obviously, if they apologized back then, you know, they didn't – They know. They yeah. effed up. And then now they're back on TikTok and, like, that's, that's like, all the comments. The top comments <laughs> is, like, we didn't forget. Like, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Which is crazy because, like, TikTok's a whole new generation. So it's, yeah. like, how do they – I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the thing is, like, people just hang on to something forever. Like It takes you, one person to bring it back up, you know. Oh, my God. I know. And then it just gets resurfaced and then you're just, like, oh, my God. I got to – Yeah. So have they said anything since? I don't think so. Yeah. No. It's better to just, like, yeah, not – Yeah, let it go. <laughs> Especially if they've been together a while. Do they have kids? I think so. Oh, okay. See. They have two kids. How old are they? I think um, they're 40s. A six-year-old and a six-month-old. That's a big age gap. Seems exhausting to have started. When I think about Courtney and Travis, too, I always see like a little crib in their room. Like, God, they have kids that are like – he has kids that are like 18. I'm like, God, to start over with a baby again would be so hard. Yeah. I guess maybe – it's a little bit easier because the kids are so grown that it's like you can, you know, focus on just the baby. Because I'm sure when you have a teenager, they kind of do their own thing, I guess. But I always but. think like, okay, we'll be able to like, we'll be traveling by ourselves again in 20 years, you know, when Mo- when Mal Mal was oh. 20. And so, you know, I'm like, oh my God, you're going to be 60, I'm be 50. And then like with them, it's like, they'll be, I mean, I guess this will be 65 or so. I don't know. I guess mm-hmm. this will be, I don't know. It's just like, I guess when you like, I don't know. I don't know because I don't have kids, but like, I have kids, but I mean, I don't have like grown kids. It's like when your kids are grown, you're like, okay, now we can get back to our life maybe yeah. not maybe you don't feel that way because i guess your life is your kids because i was thinking about that too i was like well we'll get back to just us in 20 years <laughs> <laughs> but i guess i guess yeah i guess if your life is i don't know i don't know anyways i guess you just keep having kids someone else that just had a kid that announced she was pregnant at like 43 oh um jenna du- jenna duan oh she's pregnant um, yeah oh i right? didn't know that didn't you post it or ET posted? It, I thought no. I'm sure I don't. I don't oh. really stay on top of the Jenna Dewan beat, but <laughs> I believe it because she has a she has a new is she married or she has a new boyfriend. She yeah, she's Tim's a, ex, but right. She has a kid with she has a baby with this new this other guy, and I guess they're having a baby. I'm pretty sure because I looked it up and I was like, oh, she's 43. I believe you. I'm sure that sounds about right. Yeah, 40s is really the new 30s for pregnancy. I love that too because it's like yeah. even because 30s still feels young, you know. That it's like oh yeah, I feel you know, young as hell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really, but I know what you mean. Like 45, I don't know. But it's cool to see people in their 40s uh, have babies because yeah. it's like, oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Also scary because I'm like, oh, like maybe I have like another baby, but I'm like, maybe not in my 40s. Oh, God. That's actually like a fear now. I think I feel like if I was like 45 and just found out I was pregnant, I'd be like, oh, my God, I got to start over again. I mean, but people do it. I don't know. That's life. <laughs> reproducing. Sometimes as a woman, I just feel like I just need to keep reproducing. I'm like, maybe this is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You kind of feel pressured a little bit just by the world. You're like, wow, I'm really responsible for the next generation. If I don't produce, who will? I don't know. I guess people are saying there's too many kids, though. But you feel some type of way, especially when you get to be my age. You're like, okay, this is the time. Now or never. Let's have another one. I'm already thinking about the third. I'm like, okay. Baby so- Furby. Baby Furby. I love that name, I love that you Furby. want that name. I think it's such a cute name. I love that people found those. Yeah, Furby's cute. Sparkle's cute. But the Malibu and the Barbie and Elvis stuck. Yeah, those. I yeah. mean, those are the perfect names. But yeah, Renesme Furby, Renesme, that'd be cute. If I had a baby with like a, a uh, what's his name, Rob Townsend, then I guess yeah. I, no, I think Mo, if, when you have a baby, another baby with Moses, oh, gotta go right. Renesme. <laughs> Name I know. I'm gonna keep watering the seed just in case because I love, love that it? name, and I think for you guys it makes so much sense. Like baby Renesme, it's That'd be so cute. cute. It goes with like Elvis, Malibu Barbie, Renesme. I think Renesme's gonna be like ah, oh, I gotta be the little creepy baby from Twilight. We'd have to name it like an icon. Should I say our next name, our third name? We have one. Yeah, you told me to edit it out of that one video because you're like that's good, and I was like surprised you liked it. It came to my head. It came out of nowhere, and I was like this is well, a good name. Well, I guess name. not if I told you not to. Do it. Yeah, you're like but don't say. <laughs> no, if I told you, get it out there. Third baby. It had to be like the perfect timing. We'd have to have in the year of the snake, which would be 2025, and it would have to be around Moses's birthday because it has to be a Scorpio. Oh, so I feel. Should I just say? Because I don't think it's gonna happen. I could just say it. So no one's gonna take this name. But it's another. <laughs> so I guess what it comes down to is it comes down to like movie posters, right? I have an Elvis movie poster. I have a Barbie movie poster. So there's like another movie poster, and I so like clearly see it. Hmm. And it, it, okay, so with the clues I just gave you. <laughs> Come on, I feel you. I feel you. Think uh, of movie okay, posters. Okay, let me think. Let me think. Baby reputation. What? <laughs> Are we 
we changing our pictures to black and white? What's happening? You said happening? snake. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I said what? You oh, said, oh, you're the snake. Oh, okay, okay, that was good. That was good. Baby logic. reputation. Let me think of one more. Let me think of one more. Could you imagine if I named my baby reputation? But like, think of a baby movie Jeffrey poster. Baby Jeffrey Star. <laughs> Scorpio palette. <laughs> snake <laughs> i think if we had a baby it's year of the snake which is moses's year it has to be born in scorpio season moses is scorpio okay so moses coded baby droplet <laughs> <laughs> shoot and the movie poster baby joseph and the technical dream oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so we have malibu barbie with the barbie poster we have elvis with the elvis poster and then our third baby but it would have to be a boy i don't think it works for a girl would be scorpio king Oh, that's cool. Right. Is it cool? Yeah, it is cool. Should I cut it out? Do you think it's too good? Someone's <laughs> going to take it? Well, we put it out. So that's our name if we have a baby. Right, exactly. Don't steal it. It has to be October, it first. <laughs> October 22nd to like November 22nd of 2025. And it has to, it would have to be a boy because I don't, I mean, we could give it to the girl, but I don't know. I think Scorpio King. That is pretty cool. And then, then we have the poster for it too. I never saw the movie and I really don't care for the rock <laughs> either way, but I'm just thinking it would be cool and then we can have rocky 14 and have a movie poster of rocky over there <laughs> anyways i because because the third baby i really want to know what to name if we had a third baby but um but scorpio king came to me so that's anyways. pretty cool yeah just naming i babies. guess you know if it happens like it with all the stars in line and it's that specific then you you have to go with scorpio yeah king. it'd be very specific <laughs> yes. it has to be the right timing it just would be a lot i don't know sounds like a lot though three babies sound like a lot. two babies sound like a lot uh should we order the food for the mukbang because we have like oh, 20 yeah. minutes okay let's do Yay! it i'm excited guys, for it guys go to our patreon patreon.com slash just trish if you want to see us eat our uh domino's mac and cheese and chicken nugget concoction moses set up a whole little mukbang station it's going to have a new format a new back drop we order stuff from amazon and then okay we'll be right back with more hot topics all right and we're back domino's <laughs> is on the way if you want to see our mukbang go to our patreon patreon.com slash just trash all right let's get in to the final hot topic we are so scared to talk about this actually i don't, I don't even know what's going on but oscar is like i'm scared to talk about it but he said the girlies in your stream are like talk about it they want to yes. see us get clap back i just know if we get clap back i'm not gonna see it Sam. don't tell don't tell me in hot topics so did no you one hear? tell us anything actually. i don't want to know reddit don't post about it if anyone Respond. I don't, don't like to go know. against people who are <laughs> clap back and outspoken. I'm scared of you already, but I want to hear about it because it involves our good girl Brooke. And you said Brooke talked about on the on the canceled. So yes. it's talked about there. It's out in the public. Yes. Okay. This is like a general summary because I didn't watch the actual podcast that Brooke called into. But basically, Brianna had called Brooke uh, to join in on a conversation on the BFS podcast because Dave wanted to talk about Matt Rife. So I did recently. Recently, yes. Okay. And Matt Rife is kind of old, but okay, I know. I think it. this happened a week ago a week or so ago Brooke is like the it girl she's everywhere she was on um violet benson's podcast like she's kind of been everywhere she announced her tour 50 dates crazy yeah, yeah. the canceled and there's no la date but we need an la date we're I'm ready be for there. it yes we'll yeah. be there front row yes absolutely um, i want to be on stage actually but okay. <laughs> yeah actually at sofi stadium <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wherever they're <laughs> <laughs> definitely only if it's so fine <laughs> they sold out everything so fast yes. a quick aside they sold out those dates so quickly yeah. i was pretty gag and i can't imagine like what if if we did a tour like i would <laughs> we <laughs> would not sell out <laughs> no <laughs> my tour was like i was playing 600 seat theaters and like it was just like the first oh, row of like 50 God. people it literally was but it's fine so slay it was though. the heartbreak it was tour for no, we could we could do it i'm not i'm not opposed maybe, to it after yeah, maybe in a year or so after we have the baby no we yeah. do it this year i just gotta have this baby you know what i mean i can't stand in line my back my feet everything we'll be hurts, local but. though not the bus not the bus oh tour. yeah yeah no we're gonna be at the roxy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure but, but um brianna had called brooke to join in on this conversation on bffs about the matt rife situation brooke had talked about it in the canceled episode that came out this week so it's fresh um and she said that she didn't really know why brianna was calling but then when she finally she missed one call and then she picked up the second and then she's like dave wants to talk to you and then so but she didn't know it was for the bfs podcast not, well, not when she picked up but then no. I, yeah not initially when she saw that brianna was calling she didn't know it wasn't mm -hmm. like a pre-planned thing it oh was yeah like, right away if someone called me by the way you're on the podcast so i'd be like uh, get me off the speaker yeah. phone yeah <laughs> like if it's a cold call to just join in the conversation yeah. That's an odd. But I guess if you're friends, like I guess if you were on a podcast, you're like, let me call Trish now. I mean, you don't ever call me, so I'd be like, that's weird. <laughs> but maybe if Moses was on a podcast, so let me call Trish now. Like, okay. I don't know. I, it depends how close you are. I guess, yeah. Okay. I think feel like in most cases, I feel like I would send a text like, hey, I'm doing this. Do you mind talking, you know, before the call? Definitely, right? yeah. Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, Dave is kind of grilling Brooke about like the Matt Rife situation. So they call in like, hey, can you, Dave wants to talk to you on the podcast. She's telling her now it's I for the podcast. I believe so, okay. yeah. Initially, she didn't know it was for the podcast. She thought Brianna was just calling, but then she found out. 
for the podcast. Then she talks to Dave and she has said that, you know, she loves Dave. Even as she's like t- telling the story, she reiterates that she loves Dave and BFFs and everything. Dave and the other guy, I don't watch any of these men. The other, Josh, Josh is that his Richards, name? Yes. yes. They were kind of just saying like, oh, like why would you ever expect that Matt Rife would want to date you? Like it wouldn't be, this is me paraphrasing. Okay. Um, Why would you ever expect it to be serious? Like he's not that kind of guy. Basically kind of putting like the blame almost like on her for the mm. whole Matt Rife situation instead of Matt. Very straight man And then coded. Dave was kind of said that something along the lines of she has no like Brooke has no ambition because Barstool is gonna hire her but she isn't ambitious enough blah, blah, for her career blah 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 blah. Oh my god. Yeah so really wild. Kind of talking pretty negatively about her which is wild <laughs> because you she's like on the line and then And also just so ambitious doing fifty cities on her tour. <laughs> like just literally the most ambitious person. Right? Oh and then like Brianna was like, oh come on Dave like she loves you. So she was like trying but I don't know. And what did Brooke say about it? She just was saying that she was disappointed that Dave uh, was saying all this stuff because she does like love like the show and him and like looks Mm. up and admires him, you know. But she was obviously like upset and it hurt her feelings. I mean, Um, which I think I don't have any beef with Dave, but I don't know anybody. I wouldn't say like anyone admires him. (laughs) Maybe some ten year old boys in Nantucket. That's wild. She's like, I admire him. That's that's a big. I mean, good, but wow. Yeah. Why? (laughs) I know. I was kind of gagged, and again, I didn't watch the original. I'm just taking like Brooke's word for it, you know. Like that's the one the re the retelling I watched was from Brooke. Um, was she like kind of sad? Was she like, dang, that sucked. That like hurt my feelings. Yeah, like she um, was. She was sad. Like she was disappointed because you know she's obviously close with Brianna and she likes Dave. So oh, did you say anything about that? About the calling? Like she's like, oh, I was like caught. Nothing off guard. towards Brianna. No, okay. not really. Yeah. So they're cool. They must be close enough where Brianna can just be like, I'll just call her right now. Yeah, I don't know. It's it, to me. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna say. It. To okay. me, it kind of feels like okay. Like say if it was. If I was like Brianna and you were like a Dave in the situation, yes. right? Like I kind of get the pyrodynamics are a little askew because it's like Dave is like what the boss, right? right? And he's like intimidating for sure. We're right. scared to talk about. Him. I'm like oh, I want to talk I about know. Dave. <laughs> so, scary. So I get the power dynamics are a little whatever, but it's almost like Rachel Zegler. Like you were dragging <laughs> Rachel Zegler back when we first started, and I was like, actually, like no, there's this, this, and this. Like I was still like standing up for her a bit. Yeah. So I feel like maybe that, I, like if I was Brianna in that situation, it would have been like. Uh, well, that's my friend. You know, like I would think I would have stood up for a little bit because th- a lot of the comments were like, you know, Dave only sees like part of the story, not like the oh, full context always. of what Brooke was saying yeah. before he like went off and made and like came to the, his own conclusion, you know? So if you're missing these elements of the story and you're just saying this general conclusion that goes against, you know, Brooke, who is the one calling in, Matt Rife isn't the one calling in, you know? So it's like he jumped to his own conclusion without all the details and then. You would think like Brianna as her friend would be like, actually, you're missing this, this and this. And this is mm-hmm. why it's messed up, you know? Well, I definitely think it's the intimidation factor for sure. Yeah. I think you there can only be like, especially because he's just older and he is like, well, but that, but BFS is not Barstool, right? It's like a completely different company. You're from, asking the wrong. Which is so confusing to me because when I heard him talk about it, he's like, I was approached to do this podcast with this young kid and it's like not Barstool. Oh. So I don't think he's like, I don't think, I think Brianna has that one on Barstool, but I don't think it's like related. Oh. I think it's a different one where he must got paid some money. Oh yeah. Because didn't Dave leave Barstool? I don't know. I'm. No, he's like back or something. Oh, I don't back. know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I just remember <laughs> that he left and he bought it back yeah. or something. Oh, something. I think he bought it back. I do point. feel like with the Brooke thing, it's a little bit of the, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is considered like internal like, I don't want to call it misogyny, internal something, where it's almost like me with, like, girls, but I'm like, oh, Jacob Lordy. You know what I mean? It's almost like the opposite with, like, guys. And he's like, oh, I'm like this, I'm a bro. I'm going to stick up for my bros. Like, Matt Rife. Like, he's 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 coming from the straight guy perspective. Like, okay, girls, like, what do you expect? Like, I'm Dave Portnoy. I don't have kids. I've never been married. Like, you can't expect to, like, want me to get married to you. Like, I think he's coming from, like, that perspective and not, like, the girl perspective where it's like, there's no way he can know, like, a young girl's insight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we know, right? We know. We're just like, okay, girls like the manipulation of it all you know the mental health plays an aspect and like dave just doesn't get it so i think like he in his mind but also to call her like not ambitious or whatever and that's why he didn't like hire her it's like that's so like that has to be he's just so surface level i think with stuff he doesn't get deep you know he doesn't strike me as someone who's like a deep person that can like relate to girls you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. which i think is why the whole like him and sylvana like breaking up too i think is like this like big heated thing because it's like on one hand, I, 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 I support Dave. It's like, okay, like, yeah, if you don't want to get married, like, yeah, you should end it with her. But on the other hand, it's like this young girl who, like, you know, has this hope that you are going to get married and she's young. So, like, that, you know, there's 
it's the whole age too, you know, like you're this older guy, you know, you're set in your ways, but like young girls, even if you don't lead them on, they still think, well, there's a chance, you know, they might change. They'll want to get married. Oh, he'll want kids eventually. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know their situation. I'm just saying this. I just don't think he can like relate to like young girls. He doesn't get it. Yeah. Why she would think this with Matt Rife. Cause like the stuff she shared with us, I think she said it on the podcast where he would like tell her like he was like in love with her and like wants to spend the rest of his life with her. So that makes sense why she would think she could. And people do. People do commit like Dane Cook and all these people like they do end up like committing to people and stuff. So it's not like crazy. Out of this world. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of. Also why it's so um, nasty to say his opinion about Brooke as somebody that was going to employ her. Right. <laughs> what does that have to do with somebody that wants to date her? Like yeah. it's nothing to do. Like maybe oh, he yeah. wants. Maybe Matt wants somebody that is not doing much and will be like a groupie with him all the time and follow him. Or, you know, like who knows what Matt wants. It has nothing to do with employment or. Yeah. Why did he say the unambitious part? I don't know. He's like, you're just to be be mean. Just to put her down. Yeah. Like that's so yeah, nasty. And he is like intimidating. Like I, they did ask me the beginning of January, I think to come on and I just ignored. I was so scared. I was like, I can't. Cause like, I remember I did go on once and I was, I, cause they're just intimidating. I don't know. I mean that Josh kid seems nice. And of course, Brianna, like I'm, I'm on the Brianna chicken fry bandwagon now. I love her too. So it's more just Dave. <laughs> I'm just like, Ugh. cause I know he said stuff like he always say like, Trisha doesn't like me or something. And, First of all, I'd rather have people think that, I guess. But I was just like, <laughs> I, I never said that. In fact, I think when I was on BFFs, I was just like, oh, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyways, um, he's intimidating. And we're always on Brooke. Brooke is baby girl. Baby girl. She's not even baby girl. <laughs> She's our baby girl. And um, yeah, I guess if you don't know you're going to be on too, you can't prepare. I think if you're like, no, you're going to be on BFFs, you're like, okay, they're probably going to ask me this. Like, let me be prepared. So if you're yeah. caught off guard too, it can be just a little. But a guy coming at you regardless, just constantly being like, you're this, you're this. It just like is. That's why I don't go on straight guy podcasts. I just, I don't. Howie Mandel recently did that too with Tana. She was supposed to come on the live oh, show. Yeah. Did you see that? And they were like reading her text like live. Like, oh my God. To me, I don't know. She said Paige was sick and called in and she, you know, Tana doesn't drive. So she's like, I, you know, I'll try to figure out a way. And they were basically, she was saying Paige was sick, Howie doesn't like that, you know, and then Howie was like, just tell her I don't care or whatever. Like, I don't know. It sounded to me like, I don't know. I don't know. Even like, okay, in the case that they were assuming is that she was trying to get out of it by saying that Paige was sick and she was around them being sick and Howie's like this germaphobe, right? But even if that was the case, like, just let it be at that. Like, when someone texts me and I know, like, we've had, I think we've had like three guests cancel day of. And I can usually tell if it's like real or not. not I don't know. But you know, you get a, like a vibe. You're like, oh, that just sounds like they don't want to come. Even if that's the case, I just let it go. I'm like, okay, obviously they don't want to come. Like, why am I going to push it? But they were kind of like pushing it and like reading it and being like, tell her we don't care to just come. Tell her we're getting an Uber. And it's like, well, clearly either she is concerned about being sick and doesn't want to get you sick or she's just trying to get out of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, just let it be. And she's young and I don't, whatever. Even if she's not young, right? If someone's just like, I'm having a bad mental health day, I don't want to come or I just don't want to come or whatever changes their mind. Just like, let it be at that. You know, it does suck. I mean, it does suck. You're like, and Tana's such a big guest and stuff like that. But it was kind of weird. And I think the whole point of that is, is like, you know, having like a guy, you know, the producer, or whatever, just having a guy just constantly be like, pushy, I guess, I guess you would say. I don't know. Being a and little shaming. pushy. They were trying to shame her live. Of course. To read the text live, I mean, it's yeah. crazy. They just not, like that's not verbatim, professional. That's not nice. They were like, kind of like laughing at like whatever she was saying. It's like, she's saying, oh, she's okay. I'll try and find someone and like, try and find someone, get an Uber, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I go back and forth with it. Cause I see the clips with the Howie Mandel. And I, I I've always said, I think Howie Mandel is like too good to be podcasting. I was like, okay, he's on America's at town for 20 years. Like, <laughs> why is he doing this? But, um, yeah, I just don't like that. So I guess it's again, the, the dynamic, even just like a, man right rich man dave portnoy howie mandel like they're stars or rich they're men in their 40s or actually how he's like 60 or something like that and then there's like young girls i just always think that's a good look and like that's where the sympathy to bring it back to arena i do have like sympathy for like renee rap too like it is probably annoying to hear like women like bash you or bring you down or try to keep you down for whatever reason or in her case men telling her like oh we have to add more clothing to her broadway costume because she's not a skin you know a size zero or whatever so I get that with like young girls. And I had two young girls last week. They were like both 21. And like they just had so much insecurity because of like older people, men and women, just like constantly like making them feel insecure or talking down to them or looking down, like you said, in your field, like looking down to someone because they're young. Like that is frustrating. So I think young people in general, when they get attacked by older people, it just is like – it's like intimidating. It's scary. It also is just like not a good look. I'm like you're the older one. Like just suck it up. You know what I mean? I try to be like that too when people cancel. I'm just like – Okay, maybe they don't want to. Maybe they're lying. Maybe they're making up. Who cares? Like, you know, obviously there's a reason they're not want to be here. And that's that. Just leave it at that. I don't know. 
I don't like it. I think it's yucky. But again, maybe I'm biased because I don't like old straight men. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. It makes me feel sad. And I, of course, I love Tana and Brooke too. So when it's about them, I'm like, oh, man. yeah. And obviously, like, obviously, we're biased. In the Brooke's case, especially, I feel like she was kind of just like set up, you know, in the situation. Mm-hmm. I get why people would kind of be upset with Tana because, of, like, obviously, she agreed to something. She had to cancel. But and we're biased. I get that. But. At the end of the day, like stuff happens and people like have to cancel and stuff. And yeah, it sucks. Like you said, you kind of just have to like let it go a the little bit. The publicly shaming the publicly is, shaming. Yeah, yeah. It's like that sucks. That's a, like okay, write that person off. You know what I mean? It's just like to say this person show up because I've had guests where they just don't show up. You know, and I haven't even talked about them, but like ones that I'm just like. It sucks. Like I got glam. I got all this stuff. Like it just sucks. But it's like to the, I'm not gonna put them on blast and be like mm, this person just like never showed up. They said this. They said whatever. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's because it is. It's it's to like humiliate them or to make them look bad, and then the people who already hate that person or whatever like that. You know, Tana's already gone through so much shit, and so it's like kind of piling on like a hate wagon, a hate wagon, hate train. Yeah, (laughs) I guess hate wagon. Okay, I was like, hate hate train, same thing. Yeah, Yeah, the toxic hate train. (laughs) Also, like her friend. I mean, that's a setup, and that's really not nice. I think at that point, like, how do you not text her before to warn her, like? Hey, you know, this is happening. I'm about to call you now or something. I think in that defense, like that's maybe they setup. are just close. No, I don't know because it doesn't seem like that. If she was kind of like, maybe she didn't know. I, in my head, I, I didn't, we didn't watch it. Okay. We should probably watch this because I hate when people don't watch things and whatever. Uh, it really does feel like, oh, call them up now. You know what I mean? Like, I would never, I would never do that to anybody, obviously, because it's like weird. Uh, someone did that to me. I'd like be so mad. <laughs> but I, maybe it's like a situation where, like, like I said, if Oscar's like on a podcast and like call Trish now, like it'd be funny, like whatever. Maybe it's like a heat, like, but I, they sound like they're close. If Brooke didn't have any issue with the Brianna thing, it sounds like they're close that they would just do that. Yeah. So I think they're close. I think they're pretty close friends. But that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't do it to but a close friend. I don't think it was a setup. I don't think it was like Brianna knew. She's like, oh, we're going to attack Brooke. Like, I don't think it was a setup like that. Probably knew what the wind was. Like, I don't, I don't think so. Dave is very. Sounds like somebody that's very vocal all the time about know, everything. Yeah. I'm not going with that stance. I really don't think so. <laughs> I really do think like Dave's like, oh, call her up now. We'll talk about it or whatever. And then Brianna not knowing because Dave is kind of just like loose cannon. I don't think she knew. I don't think it was like, Ooh, we're gonna ambush Brooke. Let's go. Especially if you're friends with. Oh someone. no, I don't. I don't think he. She knew exactly where it's gonna go. But I would give a warning to a Definitely friend, not. like this is what's happening. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I think maybe they're close because like when Brooke was on here, she talked a lot about Brianna. So I just assume you're close when you talk that close about people. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but yeah, I'm not sorry that I did not watch the BFS podcast. It's just not. I, I'm sorry. I know. There, and there's things that as I'm researching, I'm just like, yes, this is you know a job, and this is our responsibility as journalists. But there are some things I can just I. It's for other journalists. It's not for me. Like yeah. learning about the Ace family, I was like, people wanted us to get into the divorce family, but I was like watching oh. the updates and I was looking for stuff, no. and I'm like, I cannot see another like Snapchat of austin mcbroom <laughs> yeah, talking like 70 snapchats i'm like i can't i had to turn off the video i apologize spill stash i tried my hardest <laughs> to get through but i cannot hear him talk anymore it's just not a journey for me no BFFs, not, a journey. not a journey for me yeah um, that's very much the same crowd ace family bffs howie yeah, that's just, a different crowd that's not it's our just crowd not for me it's i'm just sure not they're for me. very successful they got <laughs> sponsored by raising canes so we love that <laughs> can't get a sponsor over here but i totally agree with that too it's the just, ace one the austin mcbroom like i kept seeing his snapchats on my tiktok and i was just like He's like getting closer with God. I'm gonna go see God right now. I was like, oh, this is giving very toxic. Like you were the toxic one. Because anyone who's toxic and they're like, we're getting closer to God. We're getting more spiritual. I'm like, you did something messed up. So okay. Uh Yeah, I can't. I just have to bow out of it. I'm only in this. I only have one foot in this like dog fight just because of Brooke, you know. But other than that, we're Brooke. We're Brooke stands over here. Oh, that's the other thing. Dave was like, oh, and cancels. Canceled is inconsistent, blah blah blah. Which it's like, oh, what? It they was post, coming for everyone. They kind of post weekly, though. I mean, they post pretty, weekly. I guess. Also, who cares? They get a million views. Like <laughs> no, no they can post. What. They literally post their episode like Saturday at midnight, and it got like a million <laughs> views. I was like, all right, good. Like, ding. It's crazy. Damn. They can kind of do anything. Damn, but... a little hater. I think he's just a hater, but you know that happens. That happens to old people. Me too. I feel, and you gotta, re- but you gotta like drain that hater. And but I think that's Dave's brand. Like he's he's just a hater, and he's just a he's that person. He's just a pushy person that he's like, I don't I don't care. I'll yeah. do you know whatever. I don't know what his attitude is, but um see you saying that <laughs> happens to old people, but then when Renee Rapp says it. Well, because I'm old and I'm one of those people and it happens to old people and I don't say it meanly. I'm like, it just happens to old people. I'm saying as an old person, we gotta rein it back. We gotta okay. rein it back and not hate it. Because it's easy. It's easy to hate on people. But I like I said, that's like his brand and that's his thing. And um anyone defending Matt Rife, I'm just like, let's not. I know. Let's immediately know. Yeah. Immediately stop, rewind it back. What are our hot topics for Patreon? 
That's a good question. That was going to be. Do we have juicy ones? <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> say, we don't know. <laughs> the surprise. <laughs> what are some juicy? I don't even know what was juicy that we haven't even talked about. A lot of people said the Tana Tana calling out what's his name, but we, do, we can't really talk about that. Oh, um, what? I mean, we can. I don't know why not. I don't know. We can talk about it. Why not? We're I like, see it everywhere. It's hard to avoid. I know. We I'm can serious. like glaze it over. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't really mind. Whatever. Yeah. As long as it promos our Patreon. Patreon.com slash just Trish, you guys. Thank you so much for watching our hot topics. I hope I, I feel like I was feisty this episode and I was really trying not to be. So um, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> I just apologize to everyone. I really wish this was called the Apology Podcast. It's just me apologizing every episode. Because I'm actually in a good mood and I actually felt good. And I was happy for today. It's my sister's birthday. I felt cute with my wig. So I don't know. But anyways, we'll see you guys at the next Hot Topics. We have great guests coming up this week. Stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time. Shout out to our producers on Patreon. They're going to start rolling the clips here. Woo! Bye. <laughs>